Teachers, who was the creepiest student you ever had? I'm not a teacher, but I was a teaching assistant. There was one kid who, in my kindest way of phrasing it, weird. He was a quiet kid, but there was a subtle look to him that suggests something was off with him. He consistently wore his PJs to class, spotted with deep eye bags and a cruel stutter. This happened during my second semester of college. I had advanced quickly and had the opportunity to help mentor for a class I had taken my first semester at the college. So obviously, I took the opportunity, thinking of all my years of being a tutor in high school. Everyone in that class was lovely. I was always delighted to help them with all of their questions and homework because I had been in their place too. But whenever it came to this kid, he just never asked for help. He had a certain arrogance to him any time the professor tried to correct him. He'd lift up one hand to her face and say, "I'll figure it out from here." I always made it a point to avoid his one-man group when it came to checking the students' answers. However, it was my job to help him. So one day when he raised his hand, I came to help him. I should have let my professor handle it. Looking back on it now, it seemed innocent if put on paper. But while I was helping him with his assignment, his eyes weren't on his paper or making eye contact. In fact, it seemed like he had a serious eye contact issue because instead of looking at anywhere but my eyes, he kept them directly on my breasts. It was unwavering. He did not stop looking at them once throughout my whole interaction. I left that conversation feeling like I should cover up, despite my clearly baggy T-shirt. It didn't stop then. Once he found that he had established a connection with me, he used the hell out of it. Whenever he saw me on campus, he would speedily walk towards me and follow me to wherever I was going. Even if it was to my bedroom, I'd have to walk as quickly as possible to shut the door on him, or he'd decide he could take a trip to my bedroom. I started to get weird emails from him asking for extra tips, student to student. I try to help him, but it'll just lead to some vague, intimate comment, and I'd cease to reply. I was scared to death. My friends began to accompany to everywhere I'd go, just in case he'd show up. One night, at around 3 a.m., while I was studying for a big test, I heard a knock on the door. Guess who it was? I didn't even open the door. I just turned off all of the lights and hoped he'd guess I was asleep. Instead of just leaving, he jiggled the doorknob for a minute until he did something completely unexpected. It was completely silence until a phone slid underneath the door with the camera app open and recording. I immediately got my roommate and we both called our RA, and they escorted him out of our building. When I went to report it to my professor, I was met with harsh criticism. She said that I should have established proper boundaries beforehand, that there was nothing she could do other than drop me from this class, as the student was the priority. I took the hit and dropped. I used to want to be a teacher, but I can't even think about teaching without the image of his face popping up again. My parents disowned my children, so I banned them for Thanksgiving. I have been with my wife Ava for eight years now, but we've been married for five. She was a single mom of three kids when we started dating. She had two daughters, now ten and twelve, and a son, now sixteen. I've watched these kids grow up. I've read the bedtime stories, done bath time, the first days of school, PTA meetings, all of it. I very much consider them to be my kids, and they've been calling me mom for almost six years now. My brother Ivan just had a baby girl with his fiancee Sarah, 27F. I love my niece, and my kids adore their cousin. My kids have been the only grandchildren on my side of the family since Ava and I got together, and there's never been a moment where the kids and my wife were treated like they didn't belong. My brother is their uncle. My mom and dad are their nana and pop. The kids see my family as their family, and I always thought that my family felt the same way about them. The kids and I were over at my brother's house just hanging out, and my parents ended up dropping by with gifts for my niece. Ivan laughed when he saw the toys and told our mom and dad that they were going to end up spoiling her rotten. My mom said, "Since my niece is their first grandchild, of course they have to spoil her." My kids were sitting in the living room with all of us, and my youngest daughter looked hurt when she realized what my mother said. My son and my 12-year-old didn't fully react to it, but I could tell it bothered the both of them too. Sarah spoke up and said, "Oh, you mean first grandbaby, not first grandchild?" My dad shook his head and replied that my niece was their first grandchild. I didn't want my kids to keep sitting there and listening to that, so I handed my son my keys and told him to wait in the car with his sisters. When they were gone, I asked my parents why the hell they'd say that my kids weren't their grandchildren, and my mom said they couldn't be their grandchildren because they weren't really my children. My wife and I were going to be hosting Thanksgiving at our house this year, but I told my parents that if they didn't view my kids as their family, then they could just host a meal at their own house with their real family while I spent the holiday with mine. I left before they could say anything else to me, and my wife and I have reiterated to the children that they will always be my kids and I will always be their other mom, regardless of our DNA. My brother is pissed at me now because he thinks I reacted too harshly, and that I should try to see where my parents are coming from. My mom texted saying that she and my dad love the kids, but they still aren't their grandchildren, and she hopes that we can come to understand that because she doesn't want this to ruin my niece's first Thanksgiving. I haven't replied back. I meant what I said, but I'm worried that maybe I'm reacting too harshly. My husband and his friends have a nickname for me in their group chat. They won't tell me what it means. This happened a couple days ago. My phone died right as I was texting my mom about something rather important, so my husband let me use his. As I was typing, a banner popped up with a text from one of his friends to their group chat, saying to the effect of "Hey, husband." Do you and St still want to Halloween plan? We talked about. So of course I'm like who street? Those are not my initials. I briefly looked at the chat. 
A few messages up I was at least able to confirm ST was me, in context of my husband mentioning a specific thing I'd done that day. Like I said ST is not an abbreviation of my name or any name I would go by. None of our friends calls me by anything other than my real name. So I was confused. I showed him the chat and asked what it stood for. He looked suddenly really flustered. He grabbed his phone back and said oh uh it's nothing, just a nickname. Okay. Well what's it stand for? He literally wouldn't tell me, he just kept saying don't worry about it. Well is there some reason I would need to worry? I wouldn't be worrying if he just explained what it meant. I was a little put off by this, to find out all his friends are calling me something I don't even know about? I told him even if it's just some dumb joke at least tell me. Because clamming up just makes it look kind of weird. He still refused to tell me. This entire back and forth was maybe a minute or two. Then, he suddenly goes, okay fine it's super terrific. Um. Look, I can't tell if I'm being crazy but I just don't fully buy that. If that's all it was, why not say so the first time I asked? I asked like three or four times for him to tell me what it stood for. Why keep avoiding it? On the other hand I know this makes me look like a really high-strung paranoid person to be suspicious when it could so easily be what he said. I don't want to accuse him of lying with no proof. And over something so stupid. This is still bugging me a little. I just want to know if I'm being insane to have an inkling of doubt about it standing for super terrific. Do you think he was telling the truth? Would it be ridiculous to bring it up again at this point? My boyfriend's family excluded me from everything so I ruined Thanksgiving. I met my boyfriend three years ago. Before me he was together with his high school sweetheart. They fell out of love and broke up. A year later, we started dating. His mom however was still heartbroken about it. I was very understanding and thought she needed time to get to know me. The ex basically grew up with them and they saw her as a part of the family. For the first year of my relationship his mom would call me ex's name, until boyfriend got angry once and told her to be nice. She laughed it off and said it was just a habit. After that she started calling me the wrong name. I corrected her a couple of times but she seemed to like hurting me so I ignored it later. My boyfriend has two sisters and a couple of weeks before Thanksgiving we were invited to barbecue at the older sister's house. I was in the kitchen with my boyfriend's mom, the sisters and one of their husbands. The older sister then talked about how my boyfriend praised my cooking to her husband and the mom was listening. She then said I at loud sure. Why don't we let Janet make the turkey this year? The sisters giggled and looked at each other and I said that's a great idea. I didn't tell my boyfriend what happened. I knew I had to do something to get them to stop treating me so horribly. So, on Thanksgiving, we went to his mom's house with the usual wine and dessert. I made no mention of turkey to my boyfriend at all. She was shocked, everybody was shocked. I said what? I thought Janet is bringing the turkey. There was yelling, crying and then we got kicked out. My boyfriend is so angry with me he hasn't talked to me since. I think he's going to run off with Janet now. I knew I didn't do anything wrong, though, so if he wants to go, so be it right? Did I actually do anything wrong? Am I the jerk for not giving my sister her share of the college fund? A little backstory, we came from an extremely sexist family. For example, my brother got a car, 75% of our parents' estate, a big farm, lands, and all the machinery for it, and they paid for his college. My oldest sister had to take out loans, so she can finish her education. I never went to college because of my undiagnosed ADHD, now I'm in therapy and start to become okay-ish, but I have money because of sheer dumb luck. My younger sister, 22, started college two years ago. My parents offered to pay to rent a room after she didn't get a scholarship and a room in the dorms. I offered to pay her scholarship and some extra for groceries, stating that I put aside college fund for all girls in our family, my two daughters, my sister, a younger cousin, and a niece. This is just one account, and in my will, it stated it has to be divided between these girls, my little sister is the oldest, and everybody else is between 6 to 12, for college expenses, and the ones who already finished college by the time I died, gets nothing from that account. If I have more nieces, I'll add them too. Now to the problem, my sister decided to drop out, get pregnant and marry, planned, with her boyfriend slash fiancé of six months. I try not to be disappointed, I am, but I shut the F up in real life about it. Today was the big announcement, I knew it beforehand, so I could act all happy, and after the lunch, she pulled me aside and asked to the leftover of her college fund. I explained to her, that there is no her fund, I already did this when she started college, and I'll be happy to pay for her tuition if she goes back someday, but she has to give me proof that she does to college. She pocketed the last semester's payment because she failed to inform me about her dropping out, and I sent her the money. She freaked out because she counted on that money for a down payment for a three-bedroom apartment, co-owning with fiancé, but I stood firm on my decision. She accused me of trying to control her with my money, and punishing her because she chose a different path in life, being a psalm, and not having a career. Our mom pointed out that it wasn't really feminist of me to not support her in this. My mom cheated on my dad. I never told him, and I never will. My mom cheated on my dad when I was in middle school. She has all but admitted it to me, 
but the truth is I always knew. My dad was out of town for a long time, and the guy in question was the father of my younger brother's friend, yikes. He was single, widowed, but my mom was, and still is, married and he knew that. I found out one night when I couldn't sleep. I realized that the TV in the living room was still on, despite it being past one. And that's when I saw them, sitting on the couch, watching a movie, sitting very close. I thought it was weird that he was here so late, my brother and his son were at a Cub Scouts camping trip, so there was no reason for him to be over, but I just went back upstairs to try and go to sleep, they didn't see me, I went behind the couch. Two hours later, still no luck on sleep. I decided to grab a glass of water. Our city had terrible tasting water, so I had to go down to the kitchen to get filtered water. I came down, TV was paused. Weird. But as I approached the kitchen, I heard soft talking from a nearby room. It was the spare bedroom. A room we hardly ever used. I didn't listen to the door, I was so scared of what this could mean, I just rushed quietly back to my room upstairs. With so little evidence, you may wonder why I jumped to such a conclusion. Soon after, my mom asked my siblings and I did not mention his, let's call him Eric, this it's because dad gets jealous when I have male friends, which is very true. They also began hanging out more and more, on their own. It was not only painfully obvious to me, but my other siblings began to notice too. Eric then became overly friendly with us, asking us to think of him as more of an uncle, and even requesting we call him Uncle Eric. None of us except my little brother agreed. I hated this guy, I thought he was a self-absorbed chump. I hated every time he visited, but I never hated my mom. Why? My dad was never going to. Win husband or father of the year, ever. He was terrible at both, and outside of being the breadwinner, did nothing for us at all. Mom was the sole person taking care of us. Making sure we were happy and healthy, and was supportive of everything my siblings and I wanted to do. I often hoped she would wake up and divorce my dad, because she could do better. But it wasn't that easy. My mom was a teacher, and then became a stay-at-home mom after my younger brother was born. Dad was the sole source of our finances, and if he knew she cheated, he would have thrown her out. I couldn't bear the thought of losing the only person who looked out for us, the only parent who actually cared about us. And after all she sacrificed for him, I didn't think he had a right to do that. So I kept that terrible secret for years. Things went back to normal, we moved school districts and she never spoke to Eric again. After graduating high school, I told my mom what I knew, and asked her if she did cheat. Her response? If you're asking if we slept together, then no. And she wouldn't meet my gaze. I told her that wasn't what I asked, but she wouldn't speak on it further. I told her I had no intentions of telling dad anything, and we left it at that. I'm scared of my obsessive neighbor. I made the mistake of having intimacy with my neighbor. We live in the same building and I came home from a night out about two weeks ago and met him in the hallway. We got talking and he invited me back to his place, we had a drink, one thing led to another and we had intimacy. I have to admit the intimacy was pretty awkward and bad, I'm cringing as I write this but as we were doing it he told me he loved me, we had spoken about twice before this night. So I got my first impression maybe he was a bit strange. I was really embarrassed by the whole thing, thought he would be too, and not very maturely decided to just avoid him. I thought he would get the hint, that it was just a drunk one-time thing and I wasn't interested. But I kept seeing him all the time, I think he must have worked out what time I leave and get back from work because I started bumping into him way more than I used to. I kept the conversation short and acted uninterested because I thought he would get the hint and back off a little. I guess I was just avoiding that awkward conversation telling him I wasn't interested but in no way was I encouraging him. He persisted and then a few days ago he added me on Facebook, which I ignored. The next time I saw him he asked me why I hadn't accepted his friend request. So I decided to be a bit more assertive and said something like the other night was fun but I'm really not interested in anything. He was quite upbeat and replied, okay that's cool but we can still be friends. So I thought maybe I had been a bit immature towards him and now that I've told him my intentions we could be friends. I still think he's being a bit overly friendly with me, I'm sure he's waiting to bump into me because I see him like all the time. He also is not shy about asking personal questions, like about ex-boyfriends and stuff. I get that some people are more open about some things but I find a little weird. On Facebook he has. Like so many of my pictures, I know we all stalk people on Facebook but he's very obvious about it. He has also messaged a couple of times asking me to hang out. My question is his behavior is a bit weird or am I just being overdramatic? I am happy to be his friend but I feel like he is being a bit over the top. I don't want to act like a b-word towards him but I don't know really how to tell him to tone it down without coming across as one. He is someone I will probably keep seeing so I feel like I have to be nice to him but he is weirding me out a bit. I ruined my future with just one touch. I had tingles from the touch but now I'm stuck with his rejection. I attended a job interview today and was measurably more nervous for this interview as opposed to others I've attended before. I was running slightly late, which fed into my anxiety, but apart from that, the initial greeting and seating went well. I was being interviewed by two men we'll call Steve and Gareth. Steve was to my 11 o'clock and Gareth to my 1 o'clock. 
I was getting quite fidgety because of my nerves, so as opposed to slightly spinning in my chair, I was sat in a spinny chair, I decided to move my foot around as it wouldn't be as visible. I quickly found a table leg, which I proceeded to tap and move my foot around for the rest of the interview, and it helped me keep focused. Gareth seemed slightly off throughout the interview, but I wasn't concerned because he seemed the quieter type, with Steve leading the interview and asking the majority of the questions. Considering it was my first interview with a company in a new field for me personally, I thought it went very well and was very productive. That was until the end of the interview. I thanked them both for their time and was about to stand up when the table leg I had been so carelessly caressing suddenly moved. Except it wasn't a table leg, it was Gareth's foot. I was instantly mortified and confused, suddenly rationalizing I had unknowingly engaged in pseudo-foot foreplay with a man over double my age. What's worse was that he knew it was my foot and decided to just keep his foot planted for the duration of the interview. I contemplated announcing that I was sorry and I didn't realize or mean to feel him up, but decided against it as Steve, with no context, would likely think I was psychotic, significantly reducing my chances of employment. After that, I quickly but normally exited the room without meeting Gareth's eyes, then went home and had a beer. Either way, I think it's safe to say I'm either very blacklisted or very hired, depending on Gareth's intimate proclivities, and I'm currently unsure on that front. My racist brother fought my husband. I think his fake redneck face got what it deserved. I have been married to my husband, Micah, for almost nine months. I have a younger brother, Wesley, who never really liked my husband. We met in middle school, but we didn't really start talking to each other until our sophomore year of high school. Micah has always been a patient and happy person. But everything went south last Saturday night. Very big detail, Micah is black. My family and I are extremely white. My brother has always been a little racist, but never enough where it was taken literally. That's why I never brought Micah around him because Wes and his friends have a very bad habit of saying the N-word. Micah knew about Wesley's habit and said as long as he didn't say it to or around him, he didn't care. Fast forward to last Saturday night, my parents invited us to dinner to celebrate my cousin's pregnancy. It was at my uncle's house, and all the kids were upstairs while the adults were downstairs. Of course, there were heavy drinks, and my brother ended up getting a little drunk. Micah got up from his seat to go get something to drink when my brother bumped into him. Micah said excuse me, but Wes cut him off midway and said, watch your stepdumb SSN word. Then Micah lost it. He started punching my brother even when he started screaming and pouring out blood. Usually, I would stop Micah, but in this situation, my brother definitely deserved it. My dad, my uncle, and my sister's husband spent five minutes trying to pull my Micah off. When Micah finally stopped, he kicked my brother one last time and then left. Everybody started babying my brother even though they said they didn't feel bad for him. When I saw Wesley's face it was red, bloody, and extremely swollen. I immediately left cause I just couldn't see my brother like that. When I got home, Micah was watching a movie on the couch. I got beside him and started crying. He asked me if I was mad at him, and I told him of course not, but that was a little extreme. He got defensive and said my brother disrespected his ethnicity and he couldn't even look me in the eye. He packed a bag and said he was staying at a hotel I tried talking him out of it, but he just walked out. My family is going berserk on me, asking me why I didn't stand up for my brother, while Micah wouldn't talk to me for any reason at all, and on top of all that, I found out I was six weeks pregnant. What should I do? My fiancé refused to marry me if I didn't do what he wanted. I have been engaged to my fiancé for six months now, and we're getting married next spring. Our relationship has not been easy. We dated for two years before getting engaged and he broke up with me once in between for five months. There was a time I was so eager to be engaged to him and now I'm lost. When we hit our year mark in the relationship, I started bugging him for an engagement ring. I thought he was the one, and I wanted something to show for it. He would always nod at me and say sure one day, but he never made any definite plans. That was until I begged him one night to just marry me. And that's when he told me, he didn't want to. He said I didn't have the perfect body for him. He preferred hourglass bodies and said that financially successful men don't like thick women and goes on to list all the successful men he knows and uses their girls as references. He told me that in order for me to get a ring on my fat fingers, I needed to get a liposuction. I was so desperate that I agreed to it. I got the surgery and it didn't do much, but he agreed to propose. The issue is that I can tell the surgery wasn't enough for him. He doesn't compliment me, doesn't really touch me, or initiate things with me. He doesn't complain or bash my looks but doesn't rave about it either. But this isn't the worst of it, I am currently in grad school and he works full time and makes over $500k slash year. He is paying for the wedding and has rubbed it in my face on two occasions how I contribute nothing and that I basically never have the right to complain about anything ever because he works so hard to pay for things, I complained once that I feel we don't spend enough quality time. I just don't know if I'm making a huge mistake getting married to him. I don't want to be miserable. I am so anxious. I don't feel like he loves me, he pushes me away when he's having a bad day and doesn't talk to me. I just feel kind of neglected in the relationship but I also don't want to be a victim and consider maybe he's right about some things. Breaking an engagement off is so embarrassing, and this would be his second broken engagement and I don't want to do that to him. I just feel really lost, how do I go about this? 
My golden child brother did something to me. My parents refused to believe me. My brother and I are only two years apart, but my parents make it a huge deal. He's the youngest and the baby in the house, so he can do no wrong, right? I always hated him because he always got to get the new toys, the attention, the praise, all of it. I'd be lucky to get a birthday cake when it came around that time of year. I made it no secret that I didn't really like him and my parents always shamed me about it but I just don't find this kid to be worth all of their attention. He's got a Justin Bieber haircut, buck teeth, and gets literal no beaches. I'm a girl and I still pull more game with girls than him. He's also a bit of an incel, but my parents don't mind him spending years in his bedroom with nothing but Mountain Dew and a pile of empty Dorito bags. This year though, my parents forced me to share a bed with him in our grandmother's house for the Thanksgiving holidays. The bed was huge though, so I separated our sides with pillows and inched as far away from him on the bed as possible. Halfway through the night, I felt the pillows moving around and since I was half asleep, I decided to just live with it and move on. A few minutes later, though, I felt someone touching the top of my butt softly. When I moved the slightest bit, the hand shot away so quickly. I was so scared but I just pretended to be asleep. That's when I felt the bed shaking a little. It went on for like five minutes and then stopped, so I fell back asleep and assumed I misunderstood the situation. Just two hours later, I felt the bed shaking violently and my brother whimpering quietly. I tried so hard to just act like nothing was going on until I felt him grab at my kitty with two fingers. I immediately got the hell up and started hitting him with my pillow as hard as I could. My parents rushed into the room because of my brother's screams and when they saw the scene, they immediately started yelling at me too. Stop. I told them what happened but they said that my shorts were showing off my SS so I must have been asking for it. I was so upset that I called my girlfriend and left in the middle of the night in a taxi. I don't know where to go from here. My husband wants to break up with me because I don't like mustard. We've been married two years, dating five. I'm not a picky eater. In fact I'm quite adventurous and every time I've traveled, I've always made it a point to try dishes with unusual slash uncommon ingredients to say I've tried them. There are very few foods I won't eat. One of them is mustard, the condiment. I don't like it. I just don't. The taste is very strong and overpowering and it's an unpleasant taste. I've tried yellow, stone ground, honey, artisan, brown, spicy, you name it. I have tried them all. And I just don't like them. My husband for some reason never understood this. He loves mustard, especially honey mustard. He puts it on all his sandwiches, dips his fries in it. And every time he tries to force me to try it. He'll insist I'll like it this time. I'm a grown woman. I know what I don't like. And I don't like mustard. So I'll say no and it'll devolve into a mini argument where he'll call me picky. It's a hissy fit every single time and while it's the most annoying thing ever, I accept it because everyone has their own flaws right? Well, last night we were on the road home from a weekend trip we took together and he stopped at a gas station to get us a quick bite. He got a hot dog slathered in mustard. I got one but decided to keep it plain. I don't really love hot dogs to begin with but I will eat them. While we waited in line, he asked what I got on mine. I told him nothing. He actually got furious and grabbed it from me. He marched over to the condiment station and began putting mustard on my hot dog, telling me to grow up and stop being picky. I just walked out and sat in the car. I didn't even want the damn hot dog anymore. My appetite was gone. He came back and began screaming at me for embarrassing him even further. The word divorce was said for the first time ever. I secretly recorded his screaming because I was genuinely afraid I would die. He was driving erratically, swerving and speeding. I'm in a hotel tonight. He ignored me all day at work and then the call started around when he realized I wasn't coming home. Non-stop voicemails and texts. He sent me a screenshot of a Google search for local divorce lawyers. I haven't eaten all day and I've been sobbing in this damn hotel room. I don't want to get divorced and I wish I had just ate the effing mustard. My homophobic grandma is giving me all of her dirty money on one condition. My grandma has always been slightly homophobic. However, as the years went by, she's gotten borderline rabid with her gay theories. Sometimes, she'd sit down and rant for hours about how the gays were trying to take over America. Every time she looked at a rainbow, I swear I saw her into h -tiller, tiny little mustache and all. I usually ignore her because I know that she's decaying and doesn't have much else to say in her old age she's also all I have. My parents died when I was very young, and they were both only children leaving an only child in their wake. So even if I didn't like the way she is, there's not much else I can do about it. The only issue is that I'm extremely feminine keyword feminine and she hates IT. She constantly starts on a rant whenever she sees me in a crop top or whenever I wear my earrings, and it always starts with, you gay folk don't know how to stop spreading your gay things everywhere. I didn't have the heart to tell her I wasn't gay because I knew she'd never understand it. So, whenever she'd start up, I'd apologize and tell her I was going to fix myself up very soon. I guess she got sick of waiting. Lately, she's been mentioning death a lot. And not in the typical, what are you going to do when I die way? She's been making it sound like she has a specific day that she was going to die, saying stuff like, this room needs to be clean for my funeral or, I'm gonna miss this place when I'm up in heaven. I've always hated when she started up like this because I didn't want her to die, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. 
It had been going on like that for weeks until doomsday happened. She sat me down on her trashy pink couch and told me she had something important to tell me. I was immediately nervous what if I had some secret relative she never told me about? Then she started with her typical death day speeches, but she had a purpose this time. With full seriousness, she told me that she wanted to make me her heir to the millions of dollars that she had hidden in a safe. But she had one condition, I had to go to conversion therapy and find myself a nice wife, or I'd be disowned, and she'd give the money to Trump's 2024 campaign. I just sat there staring at her I'm not gay. I tried to explain it but she just did shut up gesture with her hands and said no buts. Now I'm heading to a conversion therapy camp and I hope to God they allow me to wear my earrings. My boyfriend's friend failed no NT November to me. I don't know how to get this creep away from me even my boyfriend is okay with it. I have been dating my boyfriend for five years now. We met in college. Our relationship has been really good and healthy so far until something happened last weekend. My boyfriend has a big group of friends, all male, that he brings over to our apartment every weekend, they usually watch football or Game of Thrones or just hang out. I don't know these guys super well, I wouldn't call them my friends but obviously, I know their names and jobs and girlfriends, etc., we're like acquaintances. There's this one friend he has that I'll call Jake that I've always felt kind of uncomfortable around. He would always stare at me whenever he came into the kitchen and it always weirded me out. I brought it up with my boyfriend a few times. Jake is high-functioning autistic, and my boyfriend would always bring that up and say he's just socially awkward and he's not trying to be a creep. So I left it alone. Fast forward to this weekend, I was in the kitchen, and I heard them talk about no NT November. I wasn't trying to listen in but we do live in a small apartment and the kitchen and living room are side by side. I heard my boyfriend saying he lost because of me, which I thought was kind of inappropriate but whatever. Then I heard Jake saying me too and all of them left. After they had all left, I told my boyfriend what I overheard and he kind of laughed it off. I pressed it though because I wasn't sure if I had misheard Jake saying he lost no NT November because of me. Then my boyfriend said that was what Jake had said. I was stunned and extremely uncomfortable which I feel was reasonable. I told my boyfriend it was really disgusting that he would let Jake say that about me, in our own house, while I was literally next to them, and I also brought up the fact that I've talked to him before about feeling uncomfortable with Jake. My boyfriend got really defensive and said he knew Jake had a little crush on me but it wasn't a big deal. I was really upset that despite knowing that, he let Jake come into our house. Like what could have happened if no one else was around and we were alone? My boyfriend said I was being paranoid and Jake would never touch me or hurt me, but the fact that he touched himself to me, and I don't even know if it was to my Instagram pictures or some photo he's taken of me that I don't know about or God forbid, something my boyfriend has sent him, still makes me extremely uncomfortable, and I told my boyfriend that. He said he would talk to Jake about it, but he kept bringing up the fact that he's autistic so he doesn't understand social cues and it was going to be difficult to explain why it was inappropriate to him. I'm just done because I don't understand how my boyfriend didn't stand up for me or say anything and continued to allow Jake into our home despite knowing he's intimately interested in me. My boyfriend was being suspicious so I accused him of cheating. With his dead husband. My boyfriend and I have been dating for 8 months now, and he's honestly one of the best boyfriends I've had. He is super kind and considerate, and has helped me through some dark moments I was going through when we met. We currently don't live together but things have been going really well. We hardly fight and if one of us has a problem, it's easy for me to feel like I can approach him. About a month ago though I got a text from a friend of mine with a picture of my boyfriend eating ice cream with a woman I didn't recognize. He was supposed to be at work, and my friend, she works in the same area as the ice cream store, saw him there instead. I'm a little bit of a paranoid person because a previous partner has cheated on me before, so of course the alarm bells start ringing immediately. I talked myself through it and decided it was most likely a friend, and forgot about it. Fast forward to Friday, I got an early day from work, remote, and wanted to surprise my boyfriend at work and take him out during his lunch break. When I got to his office though, the receptionist said he was out of office for a few days and wouldn't be back until Monday. I tried not to freak out but I did a bit, and drove to his place. He was there and let me in, and it was just him. He told me he wasn't feeling too well and called out for a couple days, and he was sorry he forgot to tell me. I stayed over and we got takeout, and eventually we both fell asleep on the couch. I woke up around 3am needing to use the washroom and saw his phone, and unfortunately curiosity got the better of me. I knew his password by catching it a few times when he entered it, not on purpose. His text messages seemed normal besides two conversations, one to a group chat with a bunch of people I didn't know, and one to a man named Jay, fake name. The group chat stood out because the people in it talked to my boyfriend as if they were family, inviting him to vacations and outings, etc. But I knew they weren't his family because I had met them before. One person in the chat named Kristen also talked about how much their ice cream date meant to her, so I assumed she was probably the woman from last month. The texts to Jay were sparse and one-sided, with my boyfriend sending random I love you and I miss you messages every now and then. I probably should have realized then what was happening but being the dumbass I am, took it as him having a partner and me being the side piece. I woke him up immediately and showed him the phone, asking who the fuck Jay and these other people were. He looked so furious, I knew then and there I fucked up real bad. He's usually very stoic and collected, but the moment he saw the unlocked phone he got up and snatched it. He opened the photos app and pulled up a picture of him and a man together. This is Jay, my husband. He killed himself five years ago. 
He then explained to me that every year on Jay's B-Day, their wedding anniversary, and Jay's death anniversary, he and sometimes Jay's family members would do things Jay liked to do. On his birthday, which was last month, my boyfriend and Jay's older sister Kristen got ice cream at his favorite ice cream place. He had taken a few days off this week because this week was when he committed suicide, and they all planned on visiting his grave. I had known my boyfriend was by, but I had zero idea about Jay or his family. After he was done explaining everything, he calmly asked me to leave and not to contact him until he contacted me first. I love this man so much, and I don't want to lose him. But I just accused him of cheating on me with his late husband. I have no idea where to even go from here. My wife is suggesting we open our marriage to my childhood friend. My wife and I have been together for 10 years, married for 8, and now have two small kids together. She is the love of my life and I could not imagine myself with anyone else. About three years into our marriage she started to show attraction to Asian characters in the shows and movies we watched together on our weekly movie nights. At first I brushed it off as a joke, but I realized she was serious about a month ago when we started watching Chicago Med. She joked often of wanting one of the characters, Dr. Choi, to be her doctor so he could feel her up. I laughed along, until she insisted we stop watching when Dr. Choi got into a relationship with another doctor. Thinking about it now, throughout our entire relationship Asian men caught her attention. For the past few years, she's been obsessed with popular K-pop members, joking how she would rather be with Eric Moon and Jimin. Even going as far to say that she's disappointed she got stuck with a white man and that our babies aren't as cute. A friend of mine since childhood is Korean and visits with us often. He and my wife have become friends. I always thought she acted weird around him, but I never took it personally until last night. As I was cleaning up dinner, she put the kids to bed and asked to sit down and have a talk about something important. I was hesitant, but agreed. She started it by saying that she didn't feel like our intimacy life was as fulfilling as it used to be. I was taken aback and asked what I could do to bring her more fulfillment. She suggested we bring in a third person into our intimacy life. I instantly knew she had someone in mind despite her denying it. After an hour of talking in circles she revealed she had been having intimate thoughts and urges regarding my childhood friend and she suggested I watch. I was stunned and told her I didn't want to discuss this anymore and slept in the living room. She took the kids to school this morning and went to help her sister pack as she is moving soon. We haven't spoken since last night and I don't know what to do. I'm sat in my car outside my office writing this, I don't want to go home and see her knowing what she's thinking about. I think I want a divorce as she's clearly no longer the woman I fell in love with and I suspect she has already acted upon her urges with him. Is that too big of a jump over intimate fantasy? Is divorce too extreme of a response? Spoke with my friend and my wife after I returned home from work. My entitled daughter thought she was Trump's daughter. So I made her work at a pizza parlor. Am I the a-hole for punishing my 16-year-old stepdaughter after we found out she was bullying a kid for being poor? Two months ago my wife and I learned my stepdaughter was bullying a girl in school over being poor, getting free lunch at school and not being able to afford necessities such as her own nice car and stuff. Our daughter was kinda spoiled, so we provided her with everything she needed along with an allowance and a part-time job at my company, small family service business. We've been considered middle class, doing things others were not as privileged to do such as buying our daughter a car on her 16th birthday. I come from a family of immigrants and was considered in poverty growing up. After learning about the bullying I was furious as we thought we didn't raise her to behave that way. She was in honors and top ranking of her class. I tried to talk to our daughter over why she would do that and I was disturbed to learn it was because she viewed that girl as trailer trash which irritated me. The girl from what I learned is very smart and works hard, she bought her own beater car by herself and works two jobs. She considered the money our family had as our family's money, so I put her in her place and told her that it was not her money but her mom and I's money. I decided from that point on that I was spoiling my daughter too much. We ended up taking away her latest iPhone and replacing it with my old iPhone 8, by switching phones with me, with a talk and text plan. We took away her family credit card, sold her car, along with her MacBook and other luxuries. I also told her she would have to find a job without nepotism and work a minimum wage job like everyone else her age, because I'm done giving her handouts if she's gonna act entitled. Fast forward two months later, she is working at a fast food restaurant with us driving her around. She doesn't talk to me unless she needs something like a ride but is very upset with me. My wife feels like I'm taking this too far because it's affecting her social status and grades in school I however feel like she needs to be humbled because I can't have a daughter who will disrespect people just because the amount of money they have. I also feel that her behaving this way will affect her younger sister, F12, and how she perceives the world. Am I the a-hole for punishing my 16-year-old stepdaughter after we found out she was bullying a kid for being poor? I'm happy that my kid is in a mental hospital. I feel like a bad person saying this but here we go. I have two kids, Adam and Ben. This is about Ben. I wish I could word this differently but since age 1, we could sense something was wrong with Ben. He was always angry at something. Some days he would be an angel but most of the time, he was a wrecking ball. At first, we and his pediatrician thought it was terrible twos but it just continued. If his brother or a kid got his toy or his stuff, he would beat that kid and bite him slash her. He was fired from four kindergartens at age five and we were at the doors of a child psychiatrist at age five. Our journey started with an odd diagnosis but after the randomness of constant anger attacks, he was diagnosed with eye at age seven. We thought we would have the answers and he would be treated, but we were very wrong in the second part. Due to his fame, we have changed the school district, we live in the EU, not in the US, but it did not change. He still had tantrums and due to this, he has been in severe depression. It is heart-wrenching to see an eight-year-old to have depression, they don't have the childish happiness and hope.
We have tried everything. We even had private tutors for him so he could be less exposed to the school environment. We even arranged special education and he has been in really supportive schools for mental diseases but it still continued and at age 10, we had the first suicide attempt, he hung himself up with my belt in his brother's room. Then at age 12, he stole his mom's, my wife still, heart medication, she has arrhythmia, and put himself in a comatose state. The next four years were hell. We had to send our older son to live with his grandparents in a different city and our house was like a mental health unit. We had a caretaker who lived with us fully and we couldn't use any kind of sharp objects in the house. I learned how unalive proof rooms were done because we had to made it built to our house. If he wasn't committing suicide, his anger was directed outside. At age 14, he wasn't allowed to enter any public building in the town because he tried to beat someone or smash down a window. He spent more days at a ward than outside. But three months ago, he reached a new level. Until that day, he never tried to murder someone but on that day, he almost killed, he had to stay in the ICU for a month, a eight-year-old kid for beeping with his bike while he was riding in front of our house. He managed to open the door and he choked the kid until my wife became aware and hit his head with a pan. After that day, a judge ordered him to be permanently institutionalized at a mental health center. I wish I could say I was sad but I feel happy. For the first time in three months, I feel nothing but joy and happiness. Me, my wife and Adam had a great week together since ages and we had our long-deserved vacation. I might look cruel but I can't think of anything but relief. I should feel guilty for saying he is the government's problem anymore but I don't and it makes me feel guilty. I don't know if I love my son anymore but I feel glad. I am grateful to know he won't be around us anymore. I wish I could feel a little more remorseful but I can't. Maybe this is the thing that makes me remorseful. I told my daughter to choose, date a black man or enjoy the streets. My family and I are white, specifically from England. Even though our ancestors had a tendency to discriminate, we're what you would call black supremacists. Growing up in history class, I always thought that people as a whole deserve to do anything black people asked us to because we tormented them for so many years. In fact, I had a tendency to find black people more attractive than white, thin-lipped people. Before I met my beautiful wife, I was dating this very attractive black woman who had all the right curves in the right places, but sadly, we had to split due to career decisions. So, when I met my wife, I knew it was time to settle down. Luckily, my wife shared similar interests as me. I was often told growing up that I was invited to the cookout, so I had a bit of black swag. My wife happened to be a bit of a snow bunny, but her conservative family told her she had to find a nice white boy. Obviously, I was the perfect middle ground, just without the BBC. We got married, and it was happily ever after until we had our little pick-me daughter. We always raised her to obviously love the color of her skin, but be well versed in African American culture. Growing up, she was a huge fan of hip-hop and R&B, but when she went into high school, she started to get bullied for her dreads. That's when everything changed for her. She literally turned into some sort of redneck and we aren't even originated from the United States. We just came here on our Mayflower. She started bringing the worst type of boys into our house. They all managed to say the N-word more than once, claiming that it was just a term like homie. No, you idiot. It was used in slavery. I kicked every single guy out of the house, threatening to use my play weapon on them. They always ran out of the house like PCs. When she turned 18, I told her that she needed to stop bringing these fools into the house. She told me that I had no say in her dating life, and if she wanted to date a white boy, so be it. I told her that I did have a say. I'm her father, and what I say goes. That's when she made up the biggest mistake of her life, she said that now that she was 18, she could do whatever she wanted. This little girl pays no rent. I told her I was sick of her white loving SS and she had one choice now. Either date a black man for once so that she understands the culture, or get the hell out of my house. She stayed quiet and stormed into her room. I haven't heard a word from her since. I don't know if I messed up here. I left my child and I don't regret it. My parents all hate me for leaving her but I hate that little devil spawn so much. When I was 19, I worked with this extremely friendly old woman. I thought she was amazing until one night, she slipped something in my drink. She did the impossible. She roped me. When I reported it to HR, they told me that they had no proof that I didn't enjoy it and since I ended up delivering my liquid kids to her, I must have wanted it. I thought I could get over that nightmarish experience by quitting and working somewhere else, but she followed me. One day at work, this demon lady came up to me and demanded I text her back. You should have seen how scared I was. That's when she told me, she pointed at her stomach and demanded I take care of our child. My life basically ended that day. I was like a living zombie. I went to court, fought to have my rights terminated to that demon child, but I couldn't get any help. I was forced to pay child support until it was 16. I told her that day to raise her rope baby herself. A few years ago, my payments just stopped. I was curious but wanted no real contact with her so I checked in with her family and it turns out this old B word finally croaked. I could finally terminate my rights and that I did I never heard about the kid ever again. At least I thought I wouldn't. Recently, my mother has been mentioning children often. She'll tell me I need to start a family, that I need to connect to my family members more, and she'll even guilt trip me saying that she wants to see her family together before she died. One night, while on a phone call, I had enough. I asked her why was she so family obsessed as of late and she told me the truth. It contacted her through social media. It asked her about me and basically guilt tripped her by saying that she went to live with her grandparents and now she's got no one because they also died. Maybe it was your ropist baby energy, kid. My mother, being the sucker she is, felt sorry for her and asked me to talk to her. I shut her down so fast. 
I told her that I was not comfortable talking to a little ropus baby. She seemed upset but I thought she accepted it. I will say throughout it all since then, my parents have been an absolute rock, they were some of the only people to support me and I couldn't have done it without them. So I was talking to my mom at the weekend and she admitted to me that she's not only kept in touch with the kid, but she had met them the week before, and they didn't tell me. Basically they feel really bad for her because of the life she's had and are starting to enjoy her being in their life. Not only that, she's been asking about me and what happened and wants to meet me to talk and ask me questions. Obviously, I'm upset about it. I not only had a go for going against my wishes, but for betraying my trust like that. She said it's hard for her and my dad because of the way I've been, never had any kids or anything, they have always been sad that they'll never have a grandchild and this may be their only chance. She also told me she thinks I'm being out of order taking it out on an innocent child who didn't ask for this and could at least meet her to talk. I've said no and not spoken since, which is hard because I normally ring my folks twice a day and my mom keeps on trying to ring me. I don't know how to forgive them for this. My girlfriend is obsessed with the whistle guy. She's trying to replace me with him. My girlfriend and I have been dating for six years, it's the healthiest relationship I've ever had. We met in middle school but fell in love during our junior year of high school, so we basically knew everything about each other. At least I thought we did. You see when we were younger, we were obsessed with this horror game franchise called Five Nights at Freddy's. It was kind of the staple of our childhood friendship. So when the Five Nights at Freddy's movie came out, we were so excited to watch it. But something changed that day in the movie theaters. When we went to watch the movie, I saw her shift uncomfortably every time Josh Hutcherson came on the screen. I know that shift. It's the same shift that she'd do whenever we texting intimately and she got too excited. I tried to not let it get to me, but since we left that theater, she has been acting so weird. Every day the schedule was, she'd go to her classes, come out and we'd cook dinner together. Since then? She'll skip her classes to watch TikTok all day. The one time I went to check what she was watching, I just heard some dude moaning asking someone not to use the muzzle on them. I did a double take so fast and when she noticed me watching, she scrolled so quick. The next video was literally just Flo Rida's whistle. I thought it was normal until I heard the same song every day. The whistles literally haunt my dreams. I thought that was the worst of it until after we bought a bunch of candy for trick or treaters, she decided to pull up the whistle audio and split open a perfectly good candy bar with it. That's when I saw the person stealing my girl, the dude from the Hunger Games and FNAF. He was this white dude who had the sharpest jaw structure ever, but he was miniature. I thought I had no issue, this short dude was never going to come in between us. I thought wrong. She bought a life-sized body pillow of him and started cuddling with him every night. Do you know how humiliating it is to sleep next to a man every night? I told her I was sick of it and she said I could just leave. Obviously, I don't want to leave. So now I'm stuck re-watching The Hunger Games and hearing whistle every 5 minutes. She's even making me watch The Hunger Games prequel coming out this week. He's not even in IT. Help. My girlfriend is pregnant and I know it's not mine. It's impossible I don't have balls. I got into an accident after my college and will never be able to have kids. None of my family members know of this. They know about the accident but not about this. They didn't even know that during the operation, they had to remove one of my baby makers and the other? Well, it doesn't work right anymore. I have always wanted to be child-free, so it did not affect me much mentally. My parents immediately wanted me to get married after getting a job but I wanted to work on myself and explore a bit. They said no and I said that it was my wish. All my life I did what they wanted and for the first time when I talked against them, they were not happy. I picked up some dating apps and went through them but no luck. Then my parents introduced me to a family friend's daughter, and we clicked immediately. Looking back, I was a fool. She said yes to anything I said and never complained about anything. I felt kinda weird about it. I wanted her to express her interests, but she always said she was interested in whatever I did. I didn't think much about it. I said that I won't have kids ever and she surprisingly said okay. I was like damn, she is probably the one as it is very hard to find a partner who is child free in my country, or AT at least I thought, but we were in the initial stages and I have not told about my accident. Long story short, we had intimacy a month ago, I used latex because safety first. The next day on, she started ghosting me a bit. I thought it was due to my performance in bed and wanted to give her some space. Then she texted infrequently and only replied okays and k's and one line answers. I thought maybe she wanted to end the relationship and was sad but left it at that. Yesterday, all her family came to my house and she claims she's pregnant and the father is me. Needless to say, I freaked the hell out and wanted to collapse on the ground. I did not say anything while. They were talking about marriage and stuff that needs to happen because I got her pregnant. I have the biggest crush on my husband. I know people are going to come here and be like well yeah, it's your husband, like obviously I love him, but there's a difference in loving someone and having a crush on them, and I have a crush on my husband, 8 years we've been together, 8 years, and I still can't stop staring at him and thinking he's the most handsome guy, and when he stares back I still get butterflies and feel myself blush, he makes me giddy and nervous, not nervous in a bad way but nervous in a, I just want him to lean in and kiss me kinda way, like a, my phone buzzed and I hope it's him kinda way, and when we go out I find myself struggling to find the perfect outfit, because I wanna look just right, and I'll spend forever curling my hair till it's perfect. I don't know, I know I'm being gushy, but I don't really care. He's currently working on some paperwork, and I'm sitting in the room with him. We haven't said anything, but I can't stop glancing up at him from my phone and just wondering how, out of all people, I get to be his wife. 
I married that guy. How awesome is that? I think my friend's clumsy boyfriend is purposely hurting her. So my F26 friend K, F26, has been dating Andrew, 25, for almost a year now. Honestly until these last months I really liked them together and he has assimilated into our friend group really well. He's been easy to talk to and is someone who I thought could be the perfect match to K. In the beginning Andrew has always been known for being clumsy, occasionally spilling on himself, tripping and sometimes just being an overall goof, we joked he was the poster child of a himbo. It started with a simple mistake, Andrew spilling wine on K's outfit. He seemed so apologetic, and genuinely sorry. Then a couple days later at a potluck, Andrew bumps into Kay while she was bringing out a salad bowl causing it to fall on her foot and giving her a pretty nasty bruise. Again apologetic, but this time just rubbed me the wrong way. It seemed awkward the way he had bumped into her. Then there were just more of these accidents like ripping a dress when he was falling trying to catch his balance, dropping a bowl of chocolate ice cream on her shoes, and spilling an ashtray that landed all over her hair. All of this is just giving me a weird feeling, like why does it feel like his clumsiness is getting worse? Recently we were having a movie night. Kay was sitting on the floor and I had gotten up from the couch to get some more popcorn when I saw Andrew walking over with hot tea. I'm thinking no way I'm going to have her get piping hot tea spilled on her by accident. So I get up and say oh thanks for grabbing this, do you mind grabbing me popcorn since your closest he kinda gets a defensive tone with me saying yeah but let me give this to Kay first I said no it's not a problem I'll give it to her. As sweet as possible and took the mug out of his hands and gave it to Kay. He seemed kinda distant the whole rest of the evening. I talked with one of my friends in our group just about the tea drama and. She said that Andrew might have been pissed off feeling like I was babying him. I think that if he's been prone to hurting his girlfriend wouldn't he want to avoid situations that could get her seriously hurt? Wouldn't you want a friend to help you? Am I just overthinking this? I want to talk to Kay about my concerns soon because I'm really scared for her, I just want to be wise in how I speak to her because I don't want her to take anything I say the wrong way. Any advice would be so helpful. I told my estranged daughter she cannot live with us even for a brief amount of time. Me, 49, my wife Nick 46, my daughter Beth 29, my ex-wife Lisa 48, Lisa's husband Bob 39 and my ex-wife, Lisa and I were childhood sweethearts. We got pregnant early on. Our parents were supportive because our families knew each other very well. I had taken up jobs to take care of my family after finishing studies. Lisa cheated on me with Bob and left me for him. She abandoned our daughter who was 16 at the time. I worked as a trucker for a few years that made Beth attached to Lisa. It was during that time her affair began. She was mad at Lisa for this but at the same time, she couldn't live without her. Lisa didn't want any custody arrangement except for visitation rights. I met my current wife Nick three years after my divorce. We hit it off and have been inseparable since. So Nick got pregnant and that was when my world started going downhill after divorce. Beth was furious. She called nicknames and all sorts of degrading stuff you can think of. It didn't come as a surprise because Lisa already had a kid with Bob. I firmly told Beth she needs to stop calling nicknames. I proposed to Nick after six months of pregnancy. When we told Beth about it, she began throwing a tantrum about how I was breaking this family. I tried to talk to her but she threw a glass right at Nick. I saved Nick but it hit my hand. I asked Beth to leave. She went to Bob and Lisa and stayed there. This was about nine years ago. We've had little contact with Beth from there. She never wanted to see me or Nick or our son, but she was completely free with Bob and Lisa. I wasn't even invited to her wedding just to give a view how far apart we've drifted. Whenever I'd invite her for holidays, she'd turn me down. This brings us to here. Four days ago, Beth contacted me out of the blue. Her husband had been cheating on her and she's pregnant. He's kicking her out and filing for divorce and she needs a place to stay. This was the first time she, by herself, called me. I told her I don't think I can let her stay here with me. I need to ask my wife to see what she thinks of it. She began screaming at me that I was prioritizing my wife over her and that I was leaving her at her worst. I firmly reminded her that she left me in my worst period. She abandoned me. She was rude to my pregnant wife fiancé at that time. She broke me and didn't even invite me to her wedding but invited Bob. She ended the call. I spoke to my wife and left her a text that though she can't stay here, I'll be happy to pay for a place for her to rent. She didn't want me to do anything and blocked me. Truthfully, I'm still angry at Beth that she never tried to apologize for how she treated me and Nick. I've talked to Nick and she isn't comfortable with Beth being around us. I can't have her because we have two kids, one a two-year-old. Lisa can't have her around as Bob is dead and Lisa works two jobs. Am I the a-hole? I ruined my nosy friend's pregnancy announcement. I think she took the wrong test. My husband and I recently invited eight friends for lunch and were asked if we could also include a new couple, Doug and Sasha. We have never met them, but everyone who was invited has, so we said sure. At one point, Sasha needed to use the restroom, and I told her to use the master since the other bathroom was occupied. I was helping my husband finish with food when Sasha came out of the master bawling and holding something in her hand. At first, I thought she hurt herself, but she said something to Doug that caused him to drop to his knees, cry, and begin kissing her stomach. All of our friends began screaming, jumping, and crying. It was insane. Finally, Sasha tells my husband and I that she is pregnant. Of course, we congratulated both her and Doug and gave them a bag for the test, their request. I will admit I did find it odd that she brought a pregnancy test and took it at a complete stranger's house, but I did not say that. Once everyone sat down to eat, Sasha said, Hey, I hope you don't mind that I used one of your pregnancy tests. I just saw them and had two. 
I responded, confused, I don't have pregnancy tests. Sasha says yes, in your drawer. I asked Sasha if she meant the blue box in the back of my lower left drawer that was closed. She seemed to realize I was pointing out that she basically snooped and sheepishly said the box said pregnancy for a pregnancy test. I said Sasha, the brand is Pregmate, and those are ovulation tests. I do not own pregnancy tests. Did you take an ovulation test? Doug freaked the absolute F out at me, saying his wife was not an idiot and could read a box. He insisted Sasha get the test out and show me that I was wrong. Sasha refused saying she didn't need to prove anything to a complete stranger and insisted they leave immediately. One of the couples thought Doug and Sasha acted ridiculous. The other three couples thought I should have pulled. Sasha aside to discuss my concerns and said I was an asshole for saying something in front of everyone. Honestly, the whole situation caught me off guard and everything happened so quickly. The whole thing was bizarre and confusing. I just didn't have time to put the pieces together mentally before asking about the ovulation tests. Also, I found out later through one of our friends that Sasha did take an ovulation test, and she is not pregnant. I told my wife my son is not a replacement for our dead baby. She keeps showering him with love and I'm jealous. I have known my wife Janica since we were both in high school and I've loved her since I was 13. When was 21, I was just a boy when my father died and my life spiraled and I broke up with Janica. I had to grow up fast to support my grandparents, mom, and sister even though we came from a rich family I had to prove I could run the family. I made mistakes and one of those was not treating my new girlfriend Ayana at the time. I neglected her, cheated on her, yelled at her, and was a terrible person who tried to justify his bull by saying I missed my dad. I still miss him every day. After I got therapy and realized how wrong I treated her, I tried to reach out and apologize but this was 2005, and it was easy to disappear, she was gone. Janica and I have two daughters aged 8 and 5. Early last year we were going to have a third child but my wife was in a car accident involving black ice late into her pregnancy and our son died before he could be born. For a year my wife cried herself tonight every night. We have been to therapy individual and couples but it did not help. Then in January I learned about my son Arian, 15. His mom died a month prior from some cancer and his grandparents could not afford to support him so they wanted a DNA test. But the boy looks just like my father so of course he's my son. I took him in without the test and my wife latched onto him, she showered him with gifts, makes him special lunch every day, our daughters get cafeteria food, and tries to help him with homework to the point that our daughters get jealous. It really cuts me that I wasn't there for him. That I couldn't show him love, be there to change his diapers, help him when he was sick, take videos of him. I want to blame his mom but he loved her and she's dead so I can't. We've been to therapy together just he and I and last week it broke my heart when he told the therapist he wished he died instead of his mom because I felt the same way when my dad died and he feels Janica is trying to replace his mom. I know my wife isn't trying to do that. So yesterday before bed we had a talk which became a fight after I told her that Arian is not a replacement for our dead son and he's his own person. She got very angry at me, called me a jerk and hasn't talked to me all morning. She's at her parents with Arian right now and isn't coming back later in the day I don't know if I was wrong and should apologize, I'd bring it up in therapy but the shrink is on vacation. My love for the Grinch is destroying my relationship. I have a Grinch KNK. My boyfriend knows about this and for the most part, accepts it. He isn't crazy about it and doesn't really get it but he at least tries which is all I ask. He'll sometimes read the book to me to set the mood, or if he's really feeling it tell me you're a mean one in the heat of the moment. He's even begrudgingly come around to at least playing one of the three versions of the film every time we do the deed although we tend to stay away from the live-action one because it's too much for me. The thing is, I don't want to hear about the Grinch or listen to the Grinch or watch the Grinch. I want to be effed by the Grinch. And for the record, this is common among women. The Grinch's bulging sack of toys to me, and many others, is what a Mack truck is to Cardi B. The fact that he's good with dogs and experienced trauma at a young age makes me want that long, fuzzy schlong even more. My boyfriend asked me what I wanted for Christmas and I told him straight up. I told him to put on the greenest, silkiest Grinch costume he could find, kidnap me from my bed on Christmas Eve, and then ravage me in front of the Christmas tree. He flat out refused. Said it was too weird for him. I was literally begging this man to let this kitty save Christmas and he was like nah, I'm good. It ended up turning into a fight where he admitted he only gave into my initial Grinch KNKS to placate me and was still uncomfortable about the fact that I had moaned Grinch during intimacy a few weeks ago, but only because his song was playing in the background. So he's drawn a line. And if I don't drop the Grinch love, which as I said is incredibly common among women but sadly taboo, he's done for good. I don't want to lose him over this. But it's really hard for me to see past my intimate proclivities especially during the Christmas season. Is there any way we can even compromise on this, or do I simply need a more adventurous man? I told my entitled husband to send our child to her abusive mother. If he wants to criticize my hard work, she can go to someone else. I'm not someone who has ever wanted kids to start with. I knew I was unable to have children from a very young age due to a medical condition, and made peace with this long ago and it wasn't difficult for me to. I have been married to my husband for three years now and absolutely adore his daughter, she's a literal ray of sunshine and joy. And he has been honest with me from day one that his daughter will always be his first priority, something that I actually admired about him. 
I also understood that he will never be able to leave her with her mother because she has a drinking problem that can lead to violence. However, recently he started being very judgmental of everything me and his daughter do together. His daughter is now seven years old and a few months ago fell during practice and fractured her arm. He was very worried about her and I was too, but he has always been very protective of her. When I told him that he should relax she'll be all right and that he can't control every aspect of her life as a way to comfort him, he told me that he'll never be someone like my father. Something that really hurt me but I let it slide. After this incident, he started throwing comments here and there about how I'm being careless with her, how I'm not fit to be around her, or how I sometimes act so childish with her. A few days ago, I was going to pick her up from school but I was 15 minutes late due to a holdup at work, while he was out on a business trip. I felt that she was upset about waiting this long because she never had to wait this long before, but she didn't complain I just felt it. She was not as upbeat as she usually was, so I decided to cancel my plans for the weekend and spend some time with her. With the promise that all studies would be done on Sunday, which almost always was the usual case. We had what she called girls only day. Till dad comes home. Went shopping, ate out, had a Disney marathon, and spent some time by the backyard pool. That was over the course of two days till my husband came back home. I told him what we did over the few days he was away, which I have of course mentioned over the phone when we talked or his daughter mentioned when he called her. However, his reaction was not what I expected one bit. His first words to me were do you think you can be a proper mother figure for once in your life a sentence that till now still bothers me and echoes in my head. We had a big argument which ended with me saying that if he doesn't see me as a proper mother figure to his daughter, he should send her to live with her real mother. I still feel bad about saying this, and I know that it would upset me to no end if he actually separated her from me. Because I have honestly grown very attached to her. However still, I do not know if there is something I am not seeing or if there is something I fail to understand. Maybe I do not have the instinct to mother a child or I do not see it as big of a responsibility as it should be. I just do not understand. My for the streets mom has been living a lie my entire life. And my dad doesn't even care. My parents have always had a perfectly normal, loving marriage. At least that's what I saw. They've always slept in the same room, argue occasionally but nothing too crazy, go on dates regularly, and are always on the same page. The one thing my mom has been kind of weird about is her phone. She doesn't let me or my brother on it for any reason. If our phones die and we need to contact someone with hers, she will dial the number for us. She doesn't leave her phone sitting out unattended ever. It's always in her hand or her pocket. I guess that's not too unusual, but I'm someone who tends to leave my phone places when I go on my computer, cook, exercise, whatever. Recently, my mom came home late from work drunk as hell. My dad was already asleep, so I was stuck taking care of her. While I was helping her, she dropped her phone on the floor. Neither of us noticed and I eventually helped her into bed. When I went back downstairs, I noticed the phone on the ground, and picked it up. Her home screen had a Tinder notification. I was a mixture of shocked, betrayed, and, unfortunately curious. Her pin was her birth month and year, so I opened her phone and looked at her Tinder account. She had her settings as women only and mentioned that she was a lesbian in her profile. It made me feel sick to my stomach, but I took a few screenshots and sent them to myself. I was so scared to tell my dad because my mom and this family are all he has. For five days, I thought about whether I should or not. However, when I saw my dad making my mom a bouquet of flowers from our garden, I knew I had to tell him. I showed him the screenshots, and he didn't even look shocked. All he said was something along the lines of huh. Anyways, do you need a ride home from practice tomorrow? It's been a week since I told my dad, and nobody has mentioned it. They've both been acting the same as usual. I am. Seriously confused by this whole thing. I guess my dad either knows or doesn't care, and either way, my whole family feels sort of artificial. I'm kicking my entitled brother's girlfriend out. I told her she has to pay full rent because I'm not the one effing her in the SS. I live with my younger brother in a home I pay for. Since I'm not a monster, I make my brother pay only one third of the price for rent of a room this size. He still finds a way to beach about it but I just ignore him and collect my money at the end of the month. My brother happens to have a girlfriend. She's one of those snobby types but she has no real morals because I have to hear them all night. She spends nearly every night here and it's a nightmare to live with. They F all night long. I only know because I'm the one staying up all night hearing her loud intimate video level voice screaming F my butt. I can't even sleep when she's in the house because she cannot stop screeching about her butt activities. So, naturally, I hate her guts. Last week, after staying here for two whole ear-shattering weeks, she decided she was going to move in with my brother. But instead of both asking me first and moving in his room, she decided to tell me, not ask, that she was going to be moving into the free room across the hall from my brother's room. I told her to wait on it, and I thought about it for a while. Why would I charge her nothing while she's bursting my eardrums every other night? If she lived with us full-time, I would hear her intimate video star voice over breakfast. If I was going to deal with her effing every night, which reminds me how painfully single I am, I was going to be rewarded with some cash. So I called her up from my brother's room and told her that we needed to talk. As you can probably guess, she was covered in intimacy sweat. I told her point blank that if she was going to live in this house, she was going to pay full rent. I've never heard someone yell that loud before. When she heard the price, I swear I saw her ears turn red. She said that because she was my brother's girlfriend, she deserved to live here. Rent free. She demanded to know why I would charge her full cost. 
All I told her was that I was sleep deprived and I wasn't the one effing her in the SS, so she needs to pay full rent. She just paused and stared at me, turning as red as a tomato. My brother just laughed his butt off. When she saw his reaction, she stormed out. Since then, I've been able to have a full night's rest. But I feel bad, am I the jerk? My idiotic son pulled a horrible prank on a disabled person. So I threatened to give him away to his abusive father to teach him a lesson. I am remarried to my loving husband and together we have two kids, both from our previous marriages. My son Jack's father is a bit of a character. He used to argue with me until he turned red in the face, but that was only the beginning. He started to hit me when I would get too close to other men or did anything at all to upset him. I had to leave him when he started to threaten Jack too. Thankfully, I found my husband Tom but sometimes I'm a little stricter on Jack because I'm afraid that he'll turn out like his father. And it looks like I was smart to be afraid because it looks like he did. Jack is a pretty popular kid in school. His friends on the wrestling team came up with a prank for him to ask a heavily autistic girl who had a crush on him to the prom as a joke and for him to show up wearing a gorilla suit. Jack originally said no, but the wrestling team actually raised a fund which got to be somewhat north of $800 for him to do it and they paid for the gorilla suit. Jack agreed. If it matters, this is very out of character for him. After the prom, I was looking around on Instagram and saw pictures of him in the gorilla suit and was surprised that he didn't take his girlfriend Jess. After reading the comments, I learned what happened. To say I was furious doesn't even do it justice. I woke Jack up as soon as I saw it and screamed at him until my lungs gave out. Then, when Tom heard what was going on, he joined in. Tom and Jack have never gotten along. I can't prove it, but I suspect Jack's father has a hand in that. He constantly tells Jack that I lied about the abuse and that Tom is just trying to replace him. Jack told Tom, F off, I'm talking to my mother. I told him to watch his tone or I'd send him to his father as punishment. He went really quiet after that, but he looked so angry at me. So, we took away all of Jack's electronics, and we had paid for a car for his graduation present. Because of his prank and disrespect to Tom, we instead gave it to Alyssa. We also forced him to give us the dollar $800 plus, and we gave it to his date and made him write a letter of apology. He was also grounded for a month, and we canceled his 18th birthday party. When Jack's birthday came, there was a knock at the door. It was Jack's father and he had suitcases. Tom said, what is this? The custody agreement says you don't get him on this birthday? Dan just looked past Tom and said, Hey kid, I'm here for the jailbreak. He then pointed at a Mustang and said, Hope you like Fords. You can practice driving your new car on a road trip back to New York. The two of them were laughing, high-fiving and backslapping, and they just ignored us as we tried to intervene. The only time his father acknowledged me was to look me in the eye and say as cold as ice, checkmate. And for Jack to yell as they were driving off F off, Tom. Since then, Jack has had no contact with me. He talks a little bit to Alyssa and from the little he does tell her, He's doing well and his father is giving him the royal treatment, bringing him to steak houses, Yankees games, and just giving him outright cash. It has been almost a year and I'm going crazy thinking I've lost my son. I think my dad is in love with me. I am a 17-year-old girl, I live with my mom and dad and my home life is terrible. My dad is abusive in all the ways you can think of and have all the traits of a narcissist, I hate him so much. My mom on the other hand, I love her but she's weak and has no backbone. I asked her once why she never left him and begged her to leave him, but she said that she wanted her kids to grow up in a two-parent household because her parents divorced when she was a kid and she hated them for it and her relationship with them is now rocky. But my nana and papa are the best of friends and are happy in their own marriages I just wish she took a page out of their book. My relationship with my dad is terrible, I never speak to him unless necessary. He took my door off my room a long time ago because I locked it when I was getting dressed, my mom convinced him to give it back but he got a key made to I don't even see the point of how the door cause he still can barge in. He expects me, my mom and my siblings to treat him like he's God, and more stuff that I don't want to include. A couple of months ago my mom asked me and my siblings what we wanted to do after graduation. Since my birthday is a week after graduation I decided to do this program that one of the donors from the college I'm attending has sponsored. They were sponsoring five students to study abroad in a country of their choice for five months completely funded by them then afterwards I'm starting college that is states away from home. After that my dad started acting weird towards me like his behavior and whatnot. He would start complimenting me more, commenting on my body or my clothes the way he would stare at me like he was touching me with his eyes, touch me more often, and would lash out on me whenever I even brought up a boy. I told my mom and brother about it but they all thought that it was just in my head. Graduation is literally in two days and I honestly don't feel safe. The night of graduation I'm gonna stay at a friend's house, I already have clothes over there that would last me a while. I'm honestly just hoping my dad won't call the cops and force me home since I'm not of age yet. My entitled parents abandoned me for my spoiled sister. Now they want me to pay their bills. My parents adored my older sister Lizzie. I was the oops baby they had later in life. Growing up, I was well aware that my older sister was the star of the show. I wasn't abused just ignored. X. Sister had huge party every year, and the one year I wanted one, 16th birthday, my parents basically let her take over and it ended up being all about her. I always felt second best. 
When it was time for college, my folks told me I was on my own as Lizzie switched majors so they had to spend more money on her degree. It was up to me to figure it out. Luckily, I had the grades. I applied for grants slash scholarships and left two days after high school graduation. I've been low contact since. Through hard work, counseling, and good friends, I'm pretty happy with the person I am today. I own my own home, my retirement plan is sound, so I enjoy spoiling myself, nice car, vacations with friends. I often post our adventures on social media. After seven years of not speaking, cards at Christmas, my mom reached out and invited me to Thanksgiving. I went more out of curiosity than hopes of reconciliation, but I had an open mind. When I arrived, Lizzie was there. That degree never happened. She's currently posting stuff on TikTok waiting to become a viral star. In the meantime, she's living at home. After dinner, my mom mentioned that she started following me on Facebook and saw what a nice life I had. Lizzie made the comment that it must be nice to have money to throw away and ignore your familial responsibilities. My mom co-signed this nonsense, stating that since I was doing so well, I should be helping out, especially since she and dad are close to retirement age. The house needs work, and Lizzie could use a little help because family helps family. I should start pitching in to ease the burden. Here's where I might be the jerk, I told mom that she and dad bet on the wrong horse. And. That I don't owe her, him, or my delusional sibling a damn thing. I left and blocked them. Am I the a-hole for not even considering helping out since I have a healthy amount of disposable income? Am I the jerk for not attending my ex-friend's husband's funeral? Eight years ago, my best friend since childhood, 30 at the time, I'll call her M, completely ghosted me. She fully cut me off without a word of explanation. I honestly still have no idea why she did it, there wasn't a fight or any incident that I could pinpoint. I texted her two or three times to ask her to please explain what I'd done and to at least talk to me one last time, but she never did. It was traumatic and painful, and I was hurt and sad and angry. It took several years but I eventually was able to make peace with the situation. I'm no longer resentful with or angry at M, but I have no desire to interact with her ever again. Another one of my childhood friends, V, is still close with both M and me but told me at the time that she didn't know why M cut me off. I never knew if that was 100% true but I didn't want to put V in the middle of anything so I let it go. I found out a few days ago from V that M's husband died suddenly. She started dating him after she cut me off so I never met him. From what I heard from V, he was a really good guy and M is obviously devastated. I genuinely feel really sorry for her. I thought about sending some flowers or something as a small olive branch, not in an attempt to rekindle the friendship, just to offer my condolences, but then decided against it because I figured that hearing from me, a person she obviously doesn't want in her life, may make her feel worse while she's already grieving. Five and one live in the same city while M still lives near her hometown, about two hours away. V texted me yesterday to make plans for the funeral. I was really surprised and told her that I had no intention of going, and V blew up at me. She said that I was being selfish and petty about something that happened almost a decade ago, and letting my hurt feelings get in the way of being there for my friend. I told her that M chose not to be my friend eight years ago and hadn't been there for me during anything since, so I didn't feel that it was my place to show up for her. I also told V what I thought about sending flowers, that M probably won't even want to hear from me or see me, considering that she hadn't reached out once since 2014. V told me that it was presumptuous to assume that so I told V that she was being presumptuous to assume that M did want me there. Then V called me a coward. I'm not nearly as close to V as I'd been with M back in the day, so if V decides to cut contact with me over this it won't be the end of the world. But I'm curious, am I being the jerk by not reaching out to M or attending her husband's funeral? I stalked my husband for two years before I formally met him. I, 24, married my husband, 28, about a year and a half ago. The first time I saw my husband I was a freshman in high school. He was a freshman in college. He was walking his dog at the park, when he stopped to talk to my brother, 27, because they happened to go to high school together. That was the moment I became hooked. That same day I found his Instagram, his family's social media, and also where he lived since my brother offered to walk him home while I tagged along. When I got home that day I knew I wanted him, but of course I was only 14 while he was 18, so I came up with a plan. I found out his younger brother was only one year younger than me and would be attending my current high school. I figured that I had to befriend his younger brother by any means possible next year when he moves up as a freshman while I become a sophomore, and I did. It took around halfway of my junior year where we became best friends and he invited me over regularly to his house to hang out, this is where I was able to befriend my current husband's mom, and God did she love to talk about him. From her, I found out what college he goes to, his past girlfriends, what his elementary slash middle school was, his favorite slash least favorite foods, his pet peeves, what he likes, etc etc eventually when my visits started getting more and more frequent, I formally met current husband again. Current husband, I'll call him E, would come over every other week and stay for either Friday to Sunday, or Saturday to Sunday. On those days specifically I would wear my cutest outfits to impress him, and also joke around with him a lot. Eventually I befriended him as well. A little background on E, he is the school record holder for a certain sport at my school, which I just so happen to do. 
and around halfway through my senior year E came back during the season to help coach the current high school athletes, which included me, in order to get some more volunteer work hours in, and I got to spend a lot more time with him. I loved every second of it. We were friends before, but then we became much closer since I got to spend lots of extra time with him after school, where sometimes he would even drive me home since we lived relatively close. Fast forward to when I had to move away to NYC for college, E moved with me since he coincidentally got a job near my college. Edit, I lied, it wasn't a coincidence. I found out he got a job offer and applied to a college nearby his workplace, being each other's only friends in a new state, we became incredibly close. We started dating when I was almost a sophomore year of college, he proposed to me after I graduated, and we just got married almost a year ago. He knows absolutely nothing about how I truly know him, and believes it is fate that brought us together through his younger brother. Lately I have been debating on whether or not I should tell him, or at least his younger brother the truth, since the only reason I befriended him was to get closer to E. I feel guilty every time he tells others our love story, because the truth is, I've known him for 10 years, while he's only known me for about 7. I laughed when my husband asked for a divorce. Now he's refusing to leave. About two weeks ago, I was on my way out to a work outing with my co-workers when my husband told me he wanted to talk to me. He said he'd met someone new and that wanted to leave me. We have been together for 15 years, and married for over 10. We have two children together. The feelings I had were a mixture of relief and immense pain but mostly relief. We haven't been happy for at least three years, and besides intimacy and the children, we have nothing in common anymore. We live two completely different and separate lives but under the same roof. I felt relief that one of us was courageous enough to pull the plug. I can't explain why I felt the pain, though. He talked about how we were going to do this, the children, the house, etc. He said that he had found a one-bedroom and that he was moving out until everything was settled. I could keep the house etc. When he was finished I was about an hour late to the outing. I ordered an Uber and chose to wait for it outside. I got a text from one of my co-workers, Mark, that I was so late it wasn't even fashionable anymore. I took my phone to answer him but I guess I got a text from my husband at the same time, so I texted him this, in my language, oh, Mark, you don't know the half of it. My husband was dumping me, so that took a minute. I guess I'm free now. And a laughing emoji. Tell you more when I see you, I'm on my way. Since the beginning of the year, many of my co-workers have been splitting and getting divorced. We were saying that our department was being cursed until Mark, the most recent one to separate, still going through a divorce, jokingly said it wasn't a curse, it was freedom. I was referring to that, but my husband who got the text instead of Mark, was angry about how indifferent I was to start joking five minutes after I was told my 15-year relationship was over. I explained about the curse to him. He didn't care to listen now he is refusing to move out and has gone back on the divorce. He doesn't speak to me and refuses to answer when I ask when he is moving out. In one of the last conversations we had, he told me that he was planning on being generous with me during the divorce, but now he's going to take me for everything I've got and held dear. I told him that he couldn't because freedom is what I held dear. He slapped me hard across my face, this was the first time he had ever done this. Later, I heard him crying in the bathroom. I'm 42, my husband is 45, and our children are 12 and 11, boys. Should I apologize for that text? It wasn't meant for him, but still. Why does he care when he's already moving on? My brother wants my half of my savings. When my brother was 16 and I was 4 my grandmother set aside a share portfolio for us. As soon as we were old enough it was transferred into our own accounts, and it was only 4 years later that my brother dipped heavily into his and bought a new Honda. I knew about mine for much longer than he did before it became mine, and watched it grow since I understood what it was. By the time I was given full control it was already worth a ridiculous amount because a big portion of it was invested in Apple, and I'm torn on using the funds locked up as they are, because dad drilled it into me to leave it to grow until I'm 40 something. I don't talk much with my brother, he's done some stupid things to the family over the years and I didn't really grow up with him so all I usually hear about his life comes through dad. His new girlfriend works in law though, and I've received a formal letter from them both that the investments my grandmother made were designed to be for both of us to use not just for me alone, and his was only around $15,000. The number is right but mine was only worth that at the time he spent it too. They want half of the value of mine now and his girlfriend has informed me if I don't give them access then the legal fees and fines would eat up my half and I'd be left with nothing. The dividends alone support a huge part of my life and they've saved me a few times. If half of that disappeared it'd set me back years. I know it sounds selfish but I'm really used to having the extra income back me up when I've wanted to move. I've lived in four states by my own choice and I want to move and take in more before I settle down, if I ever do. How likely is it they'll win and leave me with nothing? As far as I know there was no paperwork or will just my grandmother's word. She set up my brother's accounts when he turned 19, but she gave them to dad at the same time as my brother got his, and dad transferred the whole lot too. Me six years ago. For my share I have all the logins, the trading accounts and bank accounts are in my name, and the shares are all solely in my name too. Should I find my own lawyer and if I need one what kind do I need? I have an account and I've used for years but this doesn't seem like an accounts problem but a law one. Am I the jerk for pretending not to recognize my parents when they tried to reconnect? I was raised mostly by my uncle and aunt. 
My older sister developed a serious illness when I was six and my parents decided that they couldn't care for both of us I guess, so they kind of unceremoniously dumped me at my grandparents and my uncle took me in. Like, didn't even explain to me what was going on, just you're going to go visit grand for a while and never pick me back up. My grandparents and uncle explained it later, and they were pretty livid at my parents. I've seen my parents maybe five times since then and not at all for the last nine years. I decided to stop having contact with them when I was 12 and since I was the only one reaching out all communication broke down. It turned out okay, I love my aunt and uncle and it turns out they can't have kids so they've always said I'm their miracle kid, I was just misrouted by the stork at first. I was formally adopted by them when I turned 18, I wish it had been earlier but there were some red tape things that would have made that really expensive and difficult. I'm 21 now. My sister passed away between Thanksgiving and Christmas and I made a trip back from school for the funeral, but I stayed in the back and left before my bio parents could talk to me. They called my uncle to try to talk to me, but I said I didn't want to so he told them that I wasn't available at the moment. They finally caught up to me over Christmas when I went to midnight mass with my gran, and approached me and tried to give me a hug. I did recognize them, but I pretended not to and just backed off and said sorry, do I know you? They said we're your parents. And I said my parents are at home. And went and sat down with my gran. They sat behind us and I could just feel the stare, and on the way out they were like you really don't recognize us? And I said oh, are you my dad's brother? I think I remember you from when I was little. My gran thinks they deserved it trying to come back to me like nothing happened, but they wrote me a long letter about how hurt they are and how I should understand that they were trying to do the right thing and how they'll always be my parents and I can't change that. Other family members think I was too harsh as they're grieving, but I don't think they should get a pass just because they remembered me now that my sister is gone. Would I be the jerk if I go on a vacation with my mom instead of attending my father's wedding? My, 26, parents, 44 and 45, have been high school sweethearts. My mom got pregnant straight out of high school. My mom has always supported my dad through everything. She worked double shifts so that my dad can start a business and earn significant amount of money. She never splurged on luxury goods and even after my dad started his successful business, my mom saved and encouraged him to invest more in his business. And how my lovely dad decides to thank her? He F's a woman who is only a year older than I am. They have been divorced for three years and my dad publicly started dating his mistress without any shame. My siblings have a sort of strained relationship with him, I never talk to him after the divorce. I hate to acknowledge his existence and hate it even more that he seems to think he did nothing wrong. He is getting married to his mistress in 10 days. I can tell mom is still hurt by the divorce. She told she is going to Romania, where her parents was born. She always insisted my dad to take her there but since my dad was busy cheating on her, he took her. I also wanted to go with her because I need an excuse to avoid the wedding altogether. My siblings told me if I don't attend the wedding, they wouldn't as well. My dad has been on my neck and trying guilt trip me into attending his wedding. But I already booked the tickets to Romania. My relative are saying if I don't go I will be disrespecting my dad. I don't think he deserves an ounce of respect from me. Plus I am pretty sure their marriage wouldn't last more than two years considering how much she spends just to show off. I'd rather be with my mom. Thank you people. I see that most people think that I am not doing anything wrong. I am packing my bags for Romania. I was very skeptical. I wanted people to guide me if I was doing the wrong. Thanks to those people I am even stronger in my decision. I appreciate your feedback. My girlfriend wants me to go by a different name for intimacy. To make this a bit easier to read, my name is Jason. My girlfriend and I have been together for one year and for the past six months we've taken a mini vacation at least once a month. We go to another city usually within a five-hour drive for the weekend and rent the most expensive hotel room we can afford. This usually leads to the wildest intimacy because we don't know anyone there. In the past four months we've gone on five mini vacations and every time she wanted me to go by a different name. It's always been the same name, Matt Blank. I figured this was just a fantasy name and went along with it. She's done things with Matt that she's never done with Jason. Matt took her butt V-card and deep throat V-card. If I bring it up to her that Jason wants to try those things with her, she says she's not that type of girl. She's pretty vanilla when we are at home, which I won't complain about. I never needed to have butt intimacy or be deep-throated but now that I know it's an option I feel like I'm missing out. Here's the kicker, I had to pick her up from work a few days ago and walked into her office to look for her. This was the first time I had been to her office. I spoke to the secretary to ask where she was and started on my way there. As we were leaving, her co-workers came to introduce themselves to me. From down the hall I see this guy coming towards all of us and he says something along the lines of, Hi I'm Matt Blank, SVP of Marketing. After we finished talking to everyone we went to the car. I waited for her to say something but she never did. I don't know what to say to her or if there is anything to say. I feel really uncomfortable and I see our mini vacations in a completely different light now. Is this something I should be worried about or is it normal? I ruined my stepmom's life in revenge for manipulating my dead father. My stepmother got her just desserts after my father passed. My stepmother married my dad 10 years ago when I was 35. From the start she was awful, she would listen in on every phone call, we didn't find that out for years, she made sure he didn't see his grandkids anymore, just hers, he wasn't allowed to see us either, plans were made by him and cancelled by her. The worst part is when he was very sick with cancer she refused point blank to keep us updated on his health, she told us in a group text that we were to mean to her so we didn't get the information. How were we mean? We didn't send her cards and flowers on Mother's Day. 
Sometimes he would call me cause she forgot to take his phone away from him after he was so ill and couldn't get out of bed to retrieve it. She didn't even tell us he passed for three days after, she wanted to make sure we couldn't make the funeral so she could talk badly about us. She wrote the obituary and spelled all his bio family's names wrong and listed all her kids and grandkids as bonus children and left out information like his parents and siblings' names. She was a horrible person. I knew that there was an insurance policy for me and my siblings to split, it wasn't even that big, but she was so mad that we got anything at all that she refused to give us the policy paperwork or give us his social security number so we could look it up ourselves, she claimed we would just use it to open credit cards even though the government and credit agencies had his death certificate. She told us we didn't deserve anything at all and she was mad that he didn't leave the policy to her kids instead. So, having her phone number, address and email I signed her up for everything. MLMs, religious calls, window and roof replacements, things like AliExpress offer emails, vacation entries that just sell your name to everyone. My daughter even helped me find new things to sign her up to. So we could ramp up the spam. I heard that she was forced to change her phone number because it was so bad. Serves her right, I regret nothing. Oh, there was in fact a policy and we did get it, thanks to my mother keeping some old tax returns. I made sure to send my stepmother a screenshot of the policy payout. I'm skipping my racist brother's wedding. Everyone in my family is about to block me because of my opinions. I am the youngest of four siblings and have always been known as being the more free spirit and being very vocal about my opinions. I am a liberal and I guess by my Midwestern, white, conservative family, I am considered to be extremist, probably because I believe minorities should have more rights. However, I never bring politics up with others, especially family. What I don't know about their views won't hurt me, right? Well, over the weekend, I spent it with my three siblings. My brother, who we'll call Dave, is the second oldest and lives across the country, so I never really see him, and compared to my two other siblings, we were never as close. We were all going out to get lunch, and Dave started to say the most vulgar slurs a white man could say. I was appalled because I did not think he thought this way. He then began to go on this entirely racist, misogynistic rant to the point where even the words I was trying to get out were muted by his talk of crime-ridden black cities and women are genetically inferior to men. There are some things that I can't say because of how buckwild they were. He was pulling up these crazy statistics about race and intelligence that look like they came out of the 1800s. And while I'm a child of mass media, I've seen extremists before, but not in my own family. I was disgusted by the words I was hearing. As stated earlier, I guess I am a very opinionated individual, and this argument we were having ended in a yelling match, with me leaving the restaurant in tears because I couldn't believe I was related to someone who is so openly. Backward? This ended in me deciding that I didn't want to spend my money and time attending his wedding at the end of November. I must pay for everything, hotel, plane fare, clothes, food, etc., and travel needs. I'm a college student and can hardly afford that as it is, even if... It's a family member that I enjoy being around. My family thinks I'm being irrational and dramatic, but I don't know. I think I'm fair in my judgment. Half of my family won't even be attending because it's across the country. So I am not fully aware why that half is mad at me. I know politics shouldn't tear people apart, but being with a downright incel may be where I draw the line. I've been hiding a secret from my pregnant daughter. If I tell her, I think she'd unalive herself. So me, 53, and my wife Rose, 53, had our older daughter Sarah, 31F, when we were 22. We were young and broke, but managed and now we raised Sarah the best we could. She got pregnant at 15. It was a very depressing time for her, she had to go to therapy, and never told us anything about the father, which always upset her, so we never pushed the issue. She originally wanted to terminate, but kept cancelling, and eventually told us she wanted to give her up for adoption. But five months into the pregnancy, when she was discussing with a social worker for a couple to adopt, the couple dropped out of the adoption. After trying to find more couples, Sarah asked us if we wanted to adopt. Me and Rose were both 38 at this point, and we had both been discussing having another child, so we ended up adopting our daughter Ellie when Sarah had her at 16. Two years after Ellie, me and my wife had our son Logan, 13, biologically. Growing up we always planned on telling Ellie she was adopted, but we knew with telling her that, we had to tell her Sarah was her bio mother. Sarah never became close with Ellie, not even as C-tears. She moved out after the birth and lived with Rose's sister. She has always shown sisterly love to her Logan, but never towards Ellie. There has always been conflicting feelings with Sarah I have seen posts on Sarah's Instagram where she posted a picture of what was supposed to be the five of us, but Ellie was cut out. I confronted her about this and she says it's too painful. However, a couple years ago she showed up drunk begging us to let us see her daughter. We talked to her and let her stay but did not let her near Ellie since she was drunk. We found out from her husband she had suffered several miscarriages and was told to consider a surrogate. She ended up doing that four years ago and has since had twins Jack and Jill, three, who are biologically hers. Ellie has loved being an aunt to the twins and Sarah has encouraged this with Ellie, and has been inviting Ellie over her house for family time with Logan, who loves being an uncle. We have asked Sarah that in light of the twins, and Ellie being close to them, wouldn't it be time to tell Ellie the truth, but Sarah keeps claiming she is not ready. Recently Ellie came to us and has told us she is pregnant. This time it is a completely different situation, we have met the father, he is a childhood friend of hers and they decided they wanted to lost their virginities to each other. We had the talk with Ellie long ago, as we did with Sarah. 
We approach the situation calmly and have since met with the father and his parents. Ellie is insistent on keeping the baby. She is three months along. We have not told Sarah yet, we do not know how to approach the situation, we don't know how she will be able to take it. Me and my wife are considering telling Ellie the truth but we need Sarah to be there. My sister's boyfriend was tweaking because I took a shower. Turns out it's sinful for me to take a shower in my own home. I, 17, live at home with my two sisters and parents. My older sister, 22, has been dating her boyfriend, 21, for three months now. He's been sleeping over at our apartment ever since they started dating, but the frequency of the sleepovers have been increasing over the past few weeks. Our apartment isn't tiny, but it's small enough that we all share a bathroom. The room doesn't have air conditioning and only has one window that doesn't really let a draft through. When you shower, the room steams up a ton, so my whole life we've just either left the door ajar or opened the door fully as soon as we stepped out of the shower and did the rest of our bathroom stuff. The very first time my sister's boyfriend slept over, I was getting ready to go to bed in the bathroom and had the door closed, but unlocked. I was taking off my boxer shorts when he walked into the bathroom. He immediately apologized, closed the door and we never spoke about it again. Well, last week I thought I was home alone and was taking a shower in the afternoon with the door ajar, as always. After I was done, I opened the bathroom door and continued with my routine, lotion, face cream, stuff like that, and noticed that my sister had come home during my shower. When I was done, I walked into the kitchen to find my sister and her boyfriend having an argument. I didn't want to intrude, so I left and soon heard the front door fall closed. In the evening I made dinner for our family and while I was cooking my other sister, 20, came and talked to me. Apparently, our oldest sister and her boyfriend argument was about me and my showering habits. He thinks it's disgusting that I shower with the door ajar and feels uncomfortable with me using the bathroom in my own house. This shocked me, because from the way our bathroom is set up, you can't even see the shower from outside of the door. I went to my other sister and asked her if this was true, and she refused to talk to me. It's not as if I was the only one that showered like this. We all do. I'm just the only one taking showers in the afternoon slash evening when her boyfriend is usually there, because that's when I come home from hockey practice. My boyfriend roped me because I laughed at a joke. I've been in a relationship with my boyfriend, Alex, for over a year. We've had our ups and downs, but I believe that we loved and cared for each other deeply. However, recent events have left me questioning everything. A few nights ago, Alex and I went out with friends to celebrate a friend's birthday. We had a few drinks, and I admit I was feeling a bit tipsy. I was talking to a guy friend of ours and I was laughing a lot when Alex came around, looking extremely irritated. Alex offered to drive me home, and I trusted him completely, so I accepted. I saw him dab up his friends and they yelled, have fun getting pounded tonight. I thought they were just being playful but looking back on it, I don't know anymore. Once we got to my place, I realized I was too intoxicated to go inside safely. I asked Alex to help me inside, but instead of assisting me, he insisted on coming in with me. I thought he was just being considerate, so I agreed. He had this big grin on his face and I thought it was nothing. But once we were inside, things got messy. He helped me undress and get to bed, but when I was in bed, he started saying that I owed him something. Despite my attempts to communicate that I wasn't feeling well and needed rest, Alex started to initiate intimate contact. I repeatedly told him that I wasn't in the mood and that I wanted to sleep it off, but he continued anyway. He told me that I was a good-for-nothing SLT who deserved to be touched like this. That he bet I wanted that guy friend to be inside instead now. I felt trapped and powerless. I couldn't believe that the person I loved and trusted would disregard my feelings and desires in such a way. It wasn't consensual, and I felt violated and used. I don't know why he hates me so much. I've literally done nothing to him. The next morning, Alex acted as if nothing had happened and left without a word. I was left feeling confused, hurt, and violated. I know that. What took place wasn't right, and I'm struggling to come to terms with it. He's texted me several times today, telling me that he had an awesome time. I'm scared to text him back now. He's rich and powerful, and I love him. He did this because I was too friendly, how do I fix this? Sister's POV, my ex-boyfriend cheated on me with my older sister. Am I the jerk for falling in love with my then sister's boyfriend? For some backstory on the oldest of the kids on my mom's side, my dad's side is a mess which I won't get into. Me and my siblings were all in and out throughout our lives due to being in care and an overall crappy childhood. I've always felt like the lesser sibling especially compared to my brother who was always better at school. Eventually my brother managed to make a friend. This guy was so smart in an underrated way, good with his hands, and he was popular. He even defended me from one of my foster parents though he was always called bad news. I had a huge crush on him and even was working on building up the courage to ask him out when. I realized he was taken with my sister. The two were thick as thieves, he could handle her toxic behavior, she is in therapy getting better though. She was able to keep up with how cool he is. Until my younger sister got this apprenticeship. She said it was a good thing, she would get work qualifications and money. She suddenly didn't have time for any of us anymore, saying she was tired and busy and I would understand when I get a job. I'm on benefits because I've got awful social anxiety and PTSD. Rafe was always hanging about my place since she was working every day practically. When we talk, we could talk until for hours. 
It just made me realize all those feelings I had those years ago, was more than a crush it was love. Rafe admitted it and we have been together ever since. It's true love, I've never been happier, I mean it's finally my turn to get rewarded by all the stuff I've been through. I'm the one who truly understands Rafe, the only one who can possibly understand him is his best friend, my brother, they have a really strong bond, they would do anything for each other. I get it, I would do anything for my baby brother, he's 19 and sure he's rough around the edges but I've done. My best to protect him from people who don't actually love him, not like I do. I won't let any foster parents hurt him in any form. Anyway I'm getting off topic, Rafe and I have been together for a while now. My sister hasn't even noticed why I've been so happy recently it's made me quite sad. When did we drift so far apart? I mean we are starting a family together, I'm pregnant I told my youngest brother first, albeit in the family drama, my other siblings did find out. Anyway while my boyfriend and I were making love. My sister caught up and she was furious, she kept yelling at me me I tried to say it just happened, she can't stop love from blooming and it could be a good thing. She has been MIA ever since really. Since being alone with just Rafe and baby brother. I've been thinking maybe I should report her to her work for her cruel behavior. Anyway please be kind to me in the comments I am pregnant. So am I the jerk for falling in love with my baby sister boyfriend? I ruined my nosy co-worker's life. She told the whole world about my intimate life, so I snitched to her boyfriend about her affair. I used to work in a factory, and I had this one co-worker who was my age, so I thought we were cool. I told her about a time I used a cucumber as a plastic slong, I used a latex, don't worry. I believe everyone has some wild intimacy stories and it's nothing to be ashamed of. She and my old team would talk about wild things all the time, we would laugh about it and move on. I quit that job for a while but I went back two weeks ago because I thought I missed the job and the people in it. I saw her in the break room and didn't say hi because I was talking with someone else and didn't want to be rude. I quit that day cause I realized I still hated that job. I'm assuming that's why she told the whole department, not just my team, that I effed a cucumber. I found this out last night through a mutual friend. Usually, I wouldn't let this bother me. But the fact that she told the people who gossiped to everyone after I quit struck a nerve, seemingly because she felt entitled to me saying hi. We weren't even that close. I put up with a lot of bullcrap at that job, and I'd be damned if I still had to after I quit. When I worked there, she cheated on her boyfriend who also worked there, with our coworker. Everyone knew about it, and they'd brag about it to everyone. I didn't get involved cause it wasn't my business. I found her boyfriend's social media last night and told him about her cheating. Now, she wants to fight me outside of work and the co-worker she cheated with is mad at me for causing issues for him at work. We all warned them what would happen if they got together. The whole team is currently chaotic, which is what my mutual friend texted me. I'm sure my cucumber story isn't that important anymore. What is the most wholesome thing you have seen? So when I was in my senior year of high school I used to tutor students for some extra cash. A guidance counselor who knew I tutored asked me if I could help this freshman, let's call him Tommy, in English and business because his mom called the school and said her son needed some extra help. I agreed and she gave me the mom's contact info and I messaged her. She was really kind but warned me that Tommy was an extremely shy kid with a lot of self-esteem issues. I said it was no problem whatsoever. My first few sessions with Tommy went well. He was honestly a pretty smart kid but he doubted himself so much that it caused him to do poorly. He couldn't even make eye contact with me. Our sessions mainly consisted of my reassuring him he was on the right path and reviewing his work. I always saw him walking home alone so I asked him if he knew my sister because she was in his grade and he said he didn't talk to anyone and didn't have any friends, but I would always catch him staring at groups of freshmen walking by talking and laughing and it broke my heart. I was lucky enough to have a lot of really great friends in high school so I had an idea. One day he met up with me at the library, which was also a common spot to hang out after school at my HS, and instead of grabbing a separate table for just the two of us I went Tommy we're gonna do something different today, my friends got us a table and we're gonna go sit with them while I tutor you he looked so scared but he nodded his head. We sat down and I told my friends, hey everyone this is Tommy, Tommy this is Sarah, Dallas, Johnny, Greg, and Ronnie and they all welcomed him so kindly and Dallas and Johnny asked him a bunch of questions about himself, they were pretty well known at my school, and Sarah told him she loved his hair. You could see his eyes just light up, and when the freshmen in his class walked by that week they all stared and asked how he knew who all. These seniors were and how he got to sit with them, he looked so happy it made my heart melt. Anyway for the rest of the semester he sat with my friends as I tutored him and my friends always treated him like a part of our group for those two hours three times a week. And Tommy changed, he stopped doubting himself so much and his grades got higher and he stopped slouching all the time. He even started to tease me about my boyfriend and excitedly talk about sports with the guys. After exams at the end of the semester his mom sent me a long paragraph, thanking me for everything. She said she had no idea what I did but I changed her son's life. It made me really happy, and as I was driving home one day with my friends I saw him walking home from school with three other boys from his grade and they were all talking and laughing. A couple years later my sister told me, remember Tommy, you tutored him before you graduated, I wanted you to know that he's a bit of a class clown these days, and he has a ton of friends, I thought it would make you happy to know that and it literally brought tears to my eyes. I did the smallest thing but it really seemed to impact someone's life, I'll never forget it. Students, how do you ace all of your exams? I use the Pomodoro method, and it helped me land my place at Yale for fall 24. I'm a terrible procrastinator, so I'd be cramming for some midterm at 11pm the night before the exam. 
I noticed that although I believed I was doing the best I absolutely could, both my quality of life and grades suffered. Instead of A's, I would settle for a solid B or C, and while that isn't terrible, it isn't ideal. So one day, after spending all day grinding an essay midterm to the night off, I realized my life needed to change. When I even tried to start my assignments and studying early on, I would find myself staring at the wall, counting how many cracks were in it. Absolutely anything could distract me. I always felt on edge and terribly anxious during exams because of my methods. I mean, why wouldn't I be nervous? I would literally put my grade up to some invisible outside force to hopefully give me an automatic 100. So, as usual, I started searching for some method that could get me to study for another last-minute exam. Everything led to the same method, the Pomodoro method. When I first saw it, I genuinely thought it was some lame tip teachers would give you. But when I tried it out, it actually helped me concentrate. This method consists of five steps. First, you choose what you're going to focus on. Second, you'd set a 25-minute timer. Third, you'd focus non-stop during those 25 minutes on the task you chose. Put your phone in your drawers, grab a drink, and just use the timer as a free pass on full-on grinding time. The fourth step is the best part, you actually get a break. My attention span is very short, so when I study, I feel like I'm about to die of boredom. The five-minute break allows me to release all that excessive energy while I'm studying because, if I'm being honest, I'd rather talk to my girl than study for some AP US history exam. Now, after that five minutes is up, you'd repeat this whole process until the fourth or fifth time, and then, you get a 20-minute break this time. I'm not going to lie, it's going to take a few times doing this to get used to it, but I was able to finish a lot in the time for non-stop work. So much so that when it came down to getting my GPA up for application season, I started studying using this method, and my grades started to go up because of one main reason, I was actually learning the content this time. Before, i just try to take up as much content as I could in my memory, but I'd dump it the first chance I got. I genuinely started using this method to learn, and I actually retained that info. So much so that when I wrote my Yale application, they admitted me due to my GPA and weirdly informative essay. I used to kind of hate school before, and now I can get all my work done quickly and somehow enjoy learning. Please try it out, it doesn't hurt to learn. I ruined my mom's life and I have no regrets. My mom was my best friend. We did everything together and told each other everything. We were very close, I didn't think anything could get between me and my mom. When I was 10 she got a new boyfriend we'll call him Daniel. He moved in after about a month of them dating. Daniel was really nice at first, for about a year we all got along and everything was well. He started to become a father figure for me. After a while he started to get abusive. At first it was just verbal, Daniel degraded her and complained about everything we did. Then things got physical. I remember the first night very vividly. They started arguing because she found out he was cheating. She told him to leave. Daniel didn't like that. He hit her hard and fell to the floor. My mom is 5'5, five five, he's 6'4. She got up and he slammed her into the wall. He eventually put her head through the dry wall. I remember watching this from the living room couch and running to my room when he started hitting her against the wall. After that, he started hitting me too. At first, when he would hit me, mom would try to stop it. Then everything changed. Mom started to treat me differently. Instead of hanging out with me and doing things with me all the time, suddenly she never came out of her room. When she did, she was angry and impatient. She would scream at me about the smallest things and always took his side during arguments. Six years I put up with them treating me like trash, eventually I couldn't do it anymore. Over those years I learned why my mom was acting differently. He got her addicted to meth and pills. They also sold them. One day I finally figured out how I was gonna get back at them. He sold out of our house so it wasn't hard to get evidence. I got video and audio footage of drug deals along with a text convo. We had a big garage in the backyard that he cooked out of. I called the cops. They raided the garage and found their stash. Watching them get put in the Cop cars I finally let out all the past 6 years of tears. I'm now 24 and married to an amazing caring man named Justin. We have a 3 year old named Haley and I couldn't be happier. Things do get better. My boyfriend has been calling me his ex's name for years. So I, 24, met my boyfriend, 25, in college, where we pretty much immediately hit it off. We took the same course and in the first week, he approached me while I was with some friends to compliment my hair, I had gone pink for breast cancer awareness. We maintained a strong friendship for about a year before we eventually started dating, and we shared a lot of interests. I really liked a very specific subgenre of modern takes on classic literature, 10 things I hate about you, clueless, etc., with one of my comfort movies being Nomeo and Juliet, I know it's dumb but it's silly and I love it, anyway so about 6 months into dating, we're lying in bed after a nice night, and he's running his fingers through my hair and says I love you so much, Juliet. I don't know, we watched the film together 2 nights ago and maybe I was dumb but I really just interpreted it as a pet name, so I said I love you too, Nomeo. It picked up since then. Looking back I should have known something was up by the way he apologized immediately, but for the next three years I called him Nomeo thinking we had a pair of cute couple's nicknames. It was a sweet little thing and I even noticed my actual name had fizzled out of use with Juliet, babe and baby taking its place, which I didn't mind at all. Well, two days ago my boyfriend and I went to his brother's wedding and I got to meet his ex while he split off to talk to his brother, being as she was a family friend since his childhood irk. I introduced myself as it was the first time, and she did the same and told me her name was Juliet. I immediately put it together, but didn't want to stir a scene at a wedding, so I played it off. Don't get me wrong, she was such a sweetie, and we didn't even talk about him once, even though she knew we were dating which I actually really appreciated. I confronted him about it later that night when we'd gotten home, and he immediately admitted too. 
Getting my name mixed up with hers, our names could not be more different, might I add, on that night, and didn't know what to do when I misunderstood him and just went along with it. We've kissed and he's called me Juliet, made love and he's called me Juliet, gone out and he's called me Juliet, he's called Juliet in front of my parents but I'm just now finding out he's been calling me by his ex's name? I feel sick, and I'm seriously considering breaking up considering I've felt nothing but embarrassment since the other night. I just needed to get it off my chest. He says it doesn't matter since it's our nickname now but the origin of it still sticks in my mind and I don't know what to do about it. I want to sue my son's deadbeat mom. I got a girl pregnant and she wanted to get an abortion but I didn't want that. She ended up not getting one but now she is not involved at all. We weren't in a serious relationship when she got pregnant. She has never met our son. Even after the birth she had no desire to see him. We went to court to figure custody and support could be figured out and I have 100% full legal and physical custody. Her name is on the birth certificate but she has no custody and no right to visitation or to make things like medical or education decisions. She didn't want any of that. Every month she pays 125% of the court-ordered child support. She says that if I ever marry someone who wants to adopt him she will agree but until then she'll pay support. It's been this way since our son was born. I'm raising our son all on my own. He is 18 months old now and he has never met her and I don't even have any photos of her even. I am burned out and hate being a single parent. I love my son but I resent him. My family tries to help when they can but I do it most of the time. I would never hurt or neglect him but I am exhausted all the time. I tried to go to court to give her split custody but because she wanted an abortion and I didn't and she made it clear she would never be involved after the birth, and because we went to court when he was 6 months old but because we already went after he was born and agreed on things and now she pays more support than his court order the judge said he can't force her to look after him. I haven't seen her in almost a year and the last I heard she has a tummy tuck and laser stretch marks treatment and is working at a gym. She also told her friends and family she is an egg donor and not a mother. She is a deadbeat mom and the court won't do anything and is forcing me to struggle as a single parent. Do I have any legal remedies here? My fiancé is dropping me because I chose another idiot over him. Fiancé wants to end our relationship because I didn't choose him first. My fiancé, Ryan, who I've been with for seven years told me today that he's not sure whether he wants to be with me anymore and I realize it may sound stupid but I love him so much, it feels like my world is falling apart around me I don't know what I can do. This all started a couple days ago when we were celebrating our anniversary. We invited a bunch of people including one of my closest friends, Ellie. She noticed my fiancé being affectionate towards me and made some stupid comment about how she told me so that Ryan would be better for me than my ex, Andy. My fiancé was a little confused and asked Ellie what she meant. Back when I was in college, Andy and Ryan both asked me out to the same event. I'd known Ryan since high school and we'd always had a thing but we weren't a couple. On top of that, he went to another college that was a half-hour drive away from me. Andy went to my college, his dorm was a five-minute walk away and he was someone completely new. I began to feel like my relationship with Ryan wouldn't be exciting enough because we already knew almost everything about each other. With the added headache of being half an hour away from each other, despite Ellie's protests I decided to go with Andy. I know my reasoning is beyond stupid but I never thought that this decision had the potential to blow up my future. Ryan was already hurt that I declined his request to go on a date, I didn't want to make him feel worse by telling him that I was going with someone else, not that it mattered because he stopped talking to me for about six months. During this time, it became obvious that me and Andy weren't right for each other so we ended it. When me and Ryan began talking again, I realized how much I missed him and that he was perfect for me so I asked him out. He was overjoyed and that's how we got to this point. For the rest of the party I could tell that his mood was off. He kept pulling away from my kisses slash touches and responded to me with short one sentence answers. After the party when I asked him what was wrong he just said that he felt sick. For the next two days he continued to be cold and distant. I had no idea what was happening so I waited patiently for him to become comfortable enough to tell me. Today he told me the reason he'd been acting off. From the story. It sounded like I had kept him as my backup or plan B in case my relationship with Andy failed and that it was especially messed up since we'd obviously had feelings for each other long before then. He also said that he deserved to be someone's first choice. I thought that this was just an insecurity that we could get through but then he went on to say that he's not sure whether he can see our relationship in the same light anymore so it might be best if we split up. I pleaded with him that we don't need to take it that far and that we should go to counseling or even just live separately for a few days while he thinks about whether this is what he actually wants. So far he hasn't said anything except that he absolutely refuses to go to therapy. I can tell that this is weighing on him heavily because he's been drinking more than usual but I don't know what to say to make him feel better. We've had a beautiful relationship. He's never been overly jealous or possessive and although neither of us are perfect, I couldn't ask for a more loving, respectful, intelligent and charming, soon to be, husband. I don't understand how all of that could come to an end for a foolish mistake that I made seven years ago. I don't know exactly what I'm looking for by posting on here but if anyone has any advice please, please let me know. I'm going full scorched earth on my piss loving husband. He's never going to look at the toilet the same again. I have been with him for three years now. We planned on getting married when our lives settled down. I wanted to start a family with him, I loved him more than anyone else in this world. I've sacrificed so much for him, moved away from my home, turned down jobs so I could stay with him, and stood by his side as he started to go back to school. I gave him my world. And he cheats on me. I found out over a month ago. 
The jerk got egotistical, and I found out he was cheating on me, with two different women. One is a TA at his university, the other his best friend's girlfriend. I am livid. I write this post choking back venom. I loved him so much. He was my world, but now he will be the world I burned to nothing but ash. I pay for everything since he quit his job last year to go to school. I was more than happy to help him, I made enough to support us both. The only upside is the student loans are in his name with no connection to me. It will hurt to push the scumbag out to sea, but I will survive. I have held out for a month, enough time to create what I call the day his world burns tomorrow we are hosting a party. I arranged for his family to come, but my family will sadly not be able to make it. I have packed everything valuable already, and the suitcase is in the back of my car. My brother will come during the event tomorrow, to take the car that is in my name that the dirtbag drives to my parents' house. The joint account, which is all my money anyway, is already empty. The event will be great, and he thinks it's for us to announce our engagement to his family. What will happen in reality is I will announce my departure from his life. I have already taken a job out of state, and have lined up a new place to live. I will start by telling everyone what he is into. The screenshots of him asking his friend's girlfriend to piss on him, and the many other fantasies. His degenerate mind came up with will be passed around. I will hand him the notice to vacate, as I have already broken our lease. We need to be out by the end of the month. I will then end off by informing him I have already reported he was sleeping with the TA for one of his classes the previous semester at the university and that I am sad I won't see the fallout from that. His friend also has a message for him that I will deliver, informing him that his friend group never wants to see him again as well. And with that, I will leave. I will not look back. I will set his life on fire and walk away. I was kidnapped by my childhood best friend and her mom without realizing it. My mom suggested I could share my story to raise awareness but the truth is that if it wasn't for her I probably wouldn't have even seen it as kidnapping. If you expect a dramatic story filled with abuse and torture I have to disappoint you. I think it's not a bad idea to share my story and since I love Reddit I decided to share it here. I figured that this subreddit might be the best one to do so. Using a throwaway for this as I only want to raise awareness for this without going further into it and having my main account associated with this story. But let's get to the story. This happened when I was in elementary school. Like for most children at that age boys and girls were somehow rivals. Me and my best friend, let's call her Lisa, fake name, however single-handedly destroyed that stereotype. She was pretty much the exact female copy of me. Our interests aligned so well that we quickly became best friends. The day it happened I asked my mom to stay at Lisa's house for the night. She said yes and I packed the stuff I needed. I was only prepared to stay there for one night. But one night turned into a week. When I arrived there we had a great time playing video games, doing roleplay with our toys and playing hide and seek at night. It was much fun. The next morning I prepared for my mom to get me but this was when Lisa's mom told me that my mom had called her and told her that I had to stay at their house for a bit longer. Being the naive young child I was I didn't question it. Yes I was confused but this only made me realize that I could spend more time with Lisa so for me it wasn't a problem. This was at a time where I didn't possess a smartphone so it's not like my mom could have just called me. I stayed there for an entire week before I started to question why my mom hasn't got me yet. I wasn't allowed to leave the house either. I was only allowed in the house and the garden outside. When? Me and Lisa played outside a neighbor saw me and called the cops. It turned out that my mom filed a missing report at the police station because I was missing for a few days. It turned out that my mom had actually tried to get me after the first night. But when she tried to Lisa's mom told her that I already left and that apparently I told her I wanted to walk home when she offered me to give me a ride. Lisa's mom was such a sweet person that no one would have ever suspected her of doing something like this so even my mom figured that someone had to kidnap me on my way home so she filed the report. The police reunited me with my mom and I was confused as hell. I had a great time there. Yes I was a bit worried why my mom never got me but I couldn't understand back then why Lisa's mom was arrested. This happened during summer break and I didn't see Lisa during the summer break. And she also didn't appear at school on the first day. I have no idea what happened to her. Right now I assume that this incident ruined their reputation so much that they moved away and I never saw Lisa again. Like I said it's not a typical kidnapping story. It all was so sneaky that not even I as the alleged victim could tell that it was one but my mom insists that it was a kidnapping. So yeah that's it. I still don't know if labeling myself as a victim here would be right because I just don't feel like one. But that's just me. Am I the jerk for canceling my brother's wedding? To make a novel short, my, 27, brother, 30, met his future wife, 28, Ella, at a party three years ago. Honestly, we never got along but I always tried to put up a peaceful front because my brother seemed blissfully happy with her. Ella was mean to me a lot. Like a lot. She would make comments about my weight, my makeup, and especially my dog. She hated animals and hated that I would bring my lab, toast, to my parents or my brother's house. It always just felt like something aimed to hurt me. When the two got engaged she asked me to be her maid of honor since she has no sisters or many girlfriends and since my brother seemed thrilled, I obliged. What I failed to realize when I accepted the role was that to her maid of honor meant planning the entire wedding. Like I was booking venues, florists, jazz band, everything. Even worse she expected me to put my my credit card down for all of it. My brother and her are not exactly well off and since I have a well-paying job I didn't mind holding the deposits but it was starting to add up to a lot, every time I asked Ella about it, she would say that it would all be paid back by her parents before the wedding. Well flash forward to last week, 
about three weeks before the wedding and she's unbearable to be around. She can't last more than a few sentences before snapping at anyone. So when I of course brought up the money, crap hit the fan. I asked if she had received the updated receipt of everything owed when she exploded. She called me a whole line of terrible names but the one that stuck out was her saying what do you need the money for anyway? Your sick dog is dead now. My beautiful toasty died about a month before this after he fought the bravest battle with cancer. He was my sole dog and I was devastated. I blinked at her and simply left the room, having no energy to even respond to something so cruel. I went back to my car and after the 20 silent minute drive home, I parked the car and immediately called the vendors and cancelled any deposit under my card. Every. Single. One. After almost 20 calls, all that was left of her wedding was the dress and the flower arch. I texted my brother a short explanation. I told him that every vendor would be contacting him if they wished to keep their services and they were now responsible for covering everything. And that I would no longer be attending. It was a matter of minutes before my phone started to explode and I just turned it off. It's been a few days and I haven't talked to anyone but my mom, who thankfully understands where I was coming from. My brother has tried to call but I just feel terrible. Both about what I did and about what she said. I know what I did was extreme but I also couldn't sit by and practically enable her cruelty anymore. I still can't help but feel bad for ruining my brother's big day. So I don't know, am I the jerk for this? My husband got rid of our dog. I, 34, live with my husband, 37, and daughter, 7. My daughter and I recently went on a short trip out of state while my husband stayed as he had work and was supposed to look after our dog. On the last day of our trip we got a call from my husband who was acting distraught and said that our dog Ellie had run away and that he could not find her. He claimed she just bolted away from him in the park, into some bushes and he could not find her. Our dog is quite small, a mini poodle mix and almost 13 years old, she is still active but it is really unlike her to run away from us and I was suspicious but chose to believe my husband and me and my daughter were in grief but did not want to blame him. When we came back home, he seemed surprisingly okay unlike us. Ever since the pandemic, my husband started working from home and he has always been annoyed at how much attention we gave Ellie and hated how Ellie begged to sit on our laps and is while he worked. A few days later we got a call from an animal rescue in a neighboring state quite far from us that she had been found. I picked the phone and it was on our landline which we almost never use these days but was the contact on the microchip. I told my husband and he just said that is great, I am so happy but it felt kind of blunt and insincere. I said it is strange that she got so far and he responded that someone must have stolen her and then abandoned her. This made little sense to me as to why that would happen. When he was out drinking with his buddies, I copied the videos from his dashcam for the days I was away and saw that he had indeed taken Ellie far out of state, and clearly dropped her in front of his car thrown a frisbee-like object into a field, yelled fetch and drove off without her. I was livid and confronted him and he just stupidly muttered how he dropped her there so she could find a farm and have a better life and then the next day got really angry at me for viewing his dashcam and called me and my daughter jerks. My dad is trying to bribe me so I won't tell my mom he is cheating, and it worked. For as long as I can remember, I've been a daddy's girl but after growing up? I see that he isn't who I thought he was when I was four. My parents honestly don't need to be together. My dad screams at my mom because she asks him to get a job, he had one, but where he's at isn't working right now, and mom is breaking her back trying to provide for both me and my sister. My dad, doesn't like that, we try and stick up for our mom, but when you have a dad who chases you around town, threatens his kids, and curses you out because you love your grandma more than him. You as the child can only take so much. It's grown folks business. That's fine. I don't care. Now? Here we are today. I'll admit. I may be in the wrong, but when it comes to my mom, I don't play about her. I was with my dad yesterday, grocery shopping, when we met one of his old hookups, he cheated on my mom with her some years ago, they hugged, and she tried to hug me, but I said no way in hell and walked off. I got into a lot of trouble for it. So we're in the truck and he calls her and tells her look baby, she didn't mean it. I say they and he just rolls his eyes and says she is going to apologize. I just look at him and say you're married. Call my mom baby. He then looked as if he had just got caught. This man was stupid. He called her baby. In front of me. I said. You're an idiot. He hung up the phone, and was literally crying begging. I said no, and that I'd be telling mom as soon as we got to the house. He wouldn't start the car. He begged and begged so? I used him to my advantage. He went into the Apple store and he left his phone. I've seen him put in the code, so I knew what it was. I found him texting and intimately texting multiple women. I took pictures on my phone and sent them to my sister. I guess he noticed he left it cause he came running back to the car for it. I have a brand new phone, an iPad, and he gave me a $500 shine card. I also got my sister an iPad and a new pair of Jordans. I still don't know where he got the money from since he doesn't have a job. Just learned it's money he had saved up, we checked my mom's bank statements and they are clear, and she even called her bank to make sure. But we got home, we ate dinner and I snitched on him while eating my McDonald's, which he also bought, I told my sister to show our mom the proof, and she went ballistic. He's currently kicked out, and my mom is looking for a divorce lawyer. All of my dad's side of the family is currently blaming me, but I don't care, he's a cheater and my mom is a great woman. Who's deserves the best? Would I be the jerk if I break up with my boyfriend because of his hygiene? I, 24, am too old for this. I am not a clean freak either. I met my boyfriend six months ago. He was a little hippie which I didn't mind. So, a little about him. He is a hardcore vegan. He is someone you can call an environmentalist. He thinks a lot about the environment. He only buys clothes from shops that are locally owned. 
He is big on recycling things. He doesn't use toothpaste but a mess walk. He is also anti-shave, though he trims his beard. So ever since I was with him, I always had this hunch that he is not washing properly. We do not live together. So, I am not at his house more often. He always smells like spices so I had no idea his hygiene was so bad until now. I mean I noticed it. He never shaved down there. I always had a funky smell from his junk. He doesn't have cleaning supplies in his house. I asked about it and he said he doesn't use chemicals that will harm the environment. He uses vinegar and lemon to clean stuff. It was odd but I get it. I let it slide though it should have been my first red flag. Now, I have come to the last straw. Last night when I was in his place, I was using the bathroom. After I was done, I didn't see toilet paper. This is one thing I used to be glad that he kept in his house, thought I am someone who prefers a bidet. I asked him to give me some toilet paper because he ran out. He told me he threw away all the toilet rolls because they clog the draining system and go to the ocean which then causes toxicity in fishes plus it wastes money to make toilet papers. I asked him then what does he uses to wipe himself. He told me he has switched to reusable toilet paper a month ago. He just uses these and throws them in the washing machine. I wanted to vomit there. I am thinking about ending things because, I cannot deal with this thing my entire life. Am I wrong? I ruined my sister's life. I just told the truth about her blatant racism. My sister-in-law got married last weekend. She's my long-term boyfriend's sister. They're white and I'm Middle Eastern. And a dark one with raven black hair. She was looking for a photographer that didn't bankrupt her so I suggested a friend of mine who's new in business and charged less than half because these things cost over Euro 5k these days. She was excited and I set up a group chat with her and my photographer friend. We talked a little and later they met and they started messaging directly to each other. The wedding was amazing and everything went smoothly. I was one of the guests and she seemed happy. The next day they went off to their honeymoon. I don't know if it was by mistake but instead of texting the photographer directly like she's done for the past few months, she texted him to our old iMessage chat. She thanked him but had a favor to ask him and wondered whether he could retouch some asymmetry in the flower archway? I'm sorry I don't know the right terms in English, but also if he could take me off some photos because I'm too dark and ruined the color palette. Not all pictures. Just the one she's in. I texted back are you kidding me? She didn't answer. I took a screenshot and posted it on my Instagram story tagging her in it. She called my boyfriend crying her eyes out calling me a jerk for embarrassing her and ruining her honeymoon. Boyfriend thought it was a low blow. I was blinded with rage when I did it but even now I'm calm I still don't feel that I was a jerk. But people have been contacting her apparently asking if she really wrote this. She's so beautiful and successful so please don't blame it on jealousy or scare of being outshined. Am I the jerk for threatening to kick out stepdaughter for stealing from my daughter? Four years ago my wife passed away due to breast cancer, leaving me, 42, and my daughters 19 and 17 behind. 1.5 years ago I met Vicky, 47, and we quickly fell in love. Vicky has a daughter, Heather, 24, and together they came to live with us. Vicky and I did not get married however, so Heather isn't technically my stepdaughter. Almost from the beginning Heather wasn't very nice towards me, to say the least. I tried to get to know her and ATL East establish a cordial relationship, but nothing worked. She was very disrespectful and hateful to me but also to her mother. Heather also picked verbal fights with my daughters, but I squashed that soon after it happened. Heather was the instigator and I told her that if she had a problem, she should direct it at me instead of at my daughters. It seemed to work. Last week was Casey's, my eldest daughter, 19th birthday. I gave her a spa package treatment for two persons, total $500, in the form of a gift card. And told her she could pick another person to go with. She chose her younger sister, who was happy to go. They would pick a date and make the reservation. Casey wanted to make the reservation two days ago, but couldn't find the gift card. After hours of searching we couldn't find it. When Heather came home we asked if she had seen it, she told us she didn't. After another hour, Vicky found the gift card in Heather's room, against Heather's protests, after a while Heather admitted she took the card from Casey's room and went to the spa two days ago with her girlfriend. I was pissed and told her that if she didn't pay Casey $500, I would kick her out. Since Heather doesn't have a job and has dropped out of college, she says she can't pay it. She has been living at my house rent-free with everything paid for. I told her if she can't pay for it, she should go live with her deadbeat father instead. She called me every name in. The book and locked herself in her room. Vicky says it was an jerk move, since she has nowhere to go and her father won't pay for her to live with him. We told my grandma I'm pregnant. Then she passed away in her sleep. I'm around 8 weeks with my husband and I's first. We aren't telling anyone until after the first trimester, though we did tell my mom when we found out since she is like my best friend. My grandma has a degenerative disease and for the past year or so it's been really bad. She can no longer move on her own, use the restroom by herself, talk, eat, drink, or see, and she is on 24-7 hospice care at her home. All this to say, we have been waiting on her to pass for the last year, but it's just been dragging on. Last week, we got the news that her kidneys were beginning to shut down. My mom and family have been going to visit with her and say their goodbyes. Unfortunately I live on the other side of the country, and my doctor recommended against flying back due to the stress of the environment on my still early pregnancy. So I gave my mom permission to tell her about the baby, at her discretion. I know it's kind of odd for the situation, but I thought it might give my grandma a silver lining through a hard time. My mom originally said she couldn't, because everyone was over and she couldn't tell her without our whole family overhearing. 
But yesterday my mom called me, and said she had gotten some alone time in her room and whispered it to her. She said she got this little smile, which is a really big deal for her condition, and it was a sweet moment. My mom called me again this morning, as I was puking for morning sickness. Turns out my grandma passed away peacefully in her sleep last night. And it's bittersweet. And it has me so emotional, because we have been expecting her to pass for a year now. She herself has been expecting to pass for a year now. And yet she passes away the night after we tell her she's going to be a great grandma. It hurts she will never get to meet them, but I know from that smile she felt love for them and although I couldn't be there, I feel like I gave her the best farewell. I could. I hope she thought so, too. What huge scientific discovery still bugs you to this day? When they decided to exclude Pluto from the planet club. They considered Pluto the weirdo in the friend group. Out of the group of big, normal-sized planets, Pluto was the smallest of all of them. For years, people considered Pluto the final planet in our solar system. That was until a little bit of exploration decided that Pluto, our baby planet light years away from us, was no longer one of us. Everyone rallied against this decision. Their big bogus claim was that Pluto was too different to be one of the planets. Basically, he's an Edward Cullen in a world of Jacob Blacks. For years, we considered Pluto a planet until one day. Astronomers found several more planets just like it. All of them were extremely different from the planets as we knew them tiny, icy, and they didn't even follow the rules and follow the sun in the same way. Every other planet had some sort of family, but Pluto was a little orphan for years. There was the clique of the possible life, with the precious golden child Earth who just had to have life. They also included Mars, Earth, Venus, and Mercury. They were small, too, but Pluto was too tiny to compare. It's like putting a midget next to a 5 feet 2 inches pick-me girl. They had heavy insides full of iron. Then there were the jocks gas giants like Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune. Just like jocks, they're full of gases that could probably unalive the typical human. Then there's little old Pluto. All alone, far away from the sun. He was nothing like his counterparts until they found another of his kind Eris. That made every scientist turn their head and think, what the hell is wrong with these planets? So they made special rules so that they could specifically exclude Pluto from their beloved planets. As an act of planet racism, they made these three rules that define planets as planets. 1. A planet has to be massive enough to be pounded into a roundish shape. 2. A planet has to orbit. The Sun 3. A planet has to clear objects out of its orbit. Do you want to know what phony excuse they used to kick Pluto out? Pluto doesn't clear objects out of its orbit. But you want to know something? Jupiter also doesn't clear all objects out of its orbit. It's pure dwarf racism. At least now, Pluto has made his own found family with all the other dwarf weirdo planets. My ex wrecked my car as revenge for our breakup. My ex-girlfriend is begging me to not continue with a complaint against her but I will. So I was with M for three years and for me everything was fine. We were the classic couple always together, doing everything together, going everywhere together, and all this stuff just like she wanted, and for me it was okay. But everything changed two months ago when I discovered that she was cheating on me with one of my friends. After that I discovered her cheating. I didn't make any type of scene, I never screamed, I never cried or any of these things that I hate. I just told her that we were over and we immediately broke up. Of course, she tried to change my mind with tears, begged me for forgiveness, and tried to hug me but I always refused because cheating is the only thing I will never forgive anyone. She spent two months stalking me on social media with fake accounts, she tried to contact me with new numbers and even made all her friends contact me but I had always refused to do anything for her. I wasn't even mad. I was just in shock and couldn't believe that she did that to me since I have done everything I could for her. I always made her surprises, expensive and not gifts. We were going on vacations to beautiful places. I was romantic with her bringing flowers, chocolate, making her special meals, and I even took cooking classes for her so the cheating came out of the blue for me. I love to work out so my physique isn't a problem and even intimacy wasn't a problem because I heard her many times with her female friends saying how lucky she was to find a guy that can satisfy her. Anyway one month ago I bought a new car because my old one was having serious problems and the mechanic, a family friend, told me clearly to get rid of it because the cost of maintenance was too high so I did. I bought my new car and installed some cameras and a security system inside because since it is new and is very expensive I wanted it to be protected. So three weeks ago in the morning I found out my brand new car was completely destroyed, broken windows, scratched everywhere and with a note on the front please I just want to talk with you. I immediately knew that she was the one that caused all the disaster and the cameras recorded that too. The same day I went to the police with the proofs to sue her and after a few days I received a message from a new number where she was begging me to withdraw the complaint because she was having a job interview and if they knew about it she would have lost the opportunity for the job. I never replied to her messages in this month and I never will and of course I'm not withdrawing the complaint. It's been two weeks that she is calling me and messaging me to withdraw the complaint but I will never do it because for me any action have consequences and you must think before of the action about the consequence and not after begging. It doesn't work for me. So, in the end, my ex will not have her job and I will have my car repaired and for me everything's fine although she is still messaging and calling me but I will never change my mind. I hired a private investigator to watch my fiancé on her girl's trip and now I'm torn. Hey everyone, long time lurker, first time poster here. I never thought I'd be the one to spill my story on a confession subreddit, but here we are. To cut a long story short, my fiancé and I have been together for five years. Every year, she goes on this girl's only trip with her close friends. Something in my gut had been bothering me about these trips. Maybe it was the slight changes in her behavior afterward or the cryptic conversations I'd overhear. Instead of directly confronting her, I did something I'm deeply ashamed of. 
I hired a private investigator to watch her during her recent trip. I got back the results a few days ago, and as much as I regret violating her privacy, my suspicions were not unfounded. The pie presented evidence of her being unfaithful. It shattered my heart. Now, I'm caught in this storm of emotions. On one hand, I deeply regret snooping and not trusting her enough to talk about it. On the other hand, the betrayal from her side feels even more significant. I love her, but I can't see a future together anymore. How do I even approach this situation? Do I confess my snooping? Or just end things without revealing the reason? Any advice is welcome. When my fiancé returned from her trip, I tried my best to handle things maturely. I gave her a chance to be honest, asking if there was anything she wanted to share about her trip. Instead of coming clean, she gaslit me, making me question my own perceptions and reality. Having the evidence I had, I confronted her about the affair. She was taken aback and immediately asked how I knew. I told her the truth, that I hired a pie. I didn't want to falsely accuse any of her friends as some of you suggested, even though, honestly, part of me was tempted. She was furious. I've never seen her that angry in all our years together. Additionally, feeling it was the right thing to do, I shared the evidence with one of her friend's boyfriend so he could be informed and consider getting tested, if necessary. It was clear to both of us that our relationship had reached a breaking point. We broke up right then. Despite it being my house that I financially covered for us, I left and checked into a hotel, giving her space and asking her to pack her things and move out. We didn't communicate for a few days. When she finally reached out, she expressed a desire to talk and perhaps find a way to mend things. But the trust was broken, and I couldn't see a future for us. I told her no. And now, the part I didn't see coming, she's considering pursuing alimony payments. For those unaware, palimony is financial support provided to a partner in a non-marital relationship after separation. I've been informed that due to the relationship laws in our state, this could very well be a real concern. I've initiated the process of hiring a lawyer. During our relationship, I took on the majority of the financial responsibilities, including the mortgage. We had an unspoken understanding, my money is our money, her money is her money due to our significant income differential. I never thought that my generosity would come back to haunt me. There it is, the update many of you asked for. I wish I had a happier conclusion to this chapter, but life has its twists and turns. It seems she might have the upper hand in this final act, but I'm hoping for a fair resolution. I discovered my brother has been stealing my bras and finishing on them. This all began around three months ago when I realized that a few of my bras were missing. I didn't think much of this, thinking they might have ended up mixed with my sister's laundry or misplaced during the wash but earlier today I noticed that my favorite and most comfortable bra was missing. I wanted to wear it so I searched throughout the house. I checked my sister's drawer but it wasn't there. I looked through my mom's drawer and I still couldn't find it. I decided to search through my dad's and my brother's drawers just in the chance they had somehow ended up there. While there was nothing in my dad's drawer, at the bottom of my brother's drawer, I found my bra, but also all the other missing bras. To my utter horror, each of them was clearly stained with dried liquid kids and I wanted to throw up. The disgust I felt was overwhelming, and even now, I still gag thinking about it. It's just so disgusting especially since it's my own brother. I've attempted to confront my brother by texting and calling him but he's ignoring me because he has definitely seen my messages. He's spending the night at his girlfriend's place and will be back tomorrow. I tried to talk to my parents about this, but they don't care, they said that I'm an adult, I should handle it with my brother on my own. So, it seems I'm left to deal with this situation by myself. I'm overwhelmed with feelings of violation and disgust, and I'm at a loss for what to do. I can't move out, I'm currently without a job and dependent on my parents for money. I'm at a loss I don't know how my parents just don't care and I'm honestly scared for when my brother comes home, the only person here for me is my sister who thinks my brother is a disgusting creep. If anyone has any advice it would be appreciated because I don't know what to do, I don't think I can bear to look at my brother I just feel so disgusted. How do I go about confronting? My brother? Is there any way for me to feel safe in my own house again? My little brother threatened me with a weapon and my parents don't care. Every single day, multiple times a day my brother will have a complete meltdown over video games. He would scream obscenities at the screen, throw his chair and stomp on the floor as hard as he can. I finally came upstairs and yelled at him to stop because it was driving me insane and I finally had enough. He walks into the kitchen, pulls a weapon out of the drawer and says go the f back downstairs. By the look in his eyes, I can tell he really wanted to do it. I was shocked. I called for mom and he just puts the weapon back and goes back to his game so he can pretend that he didn't do anything. My mom came inside the house from the backyard and I said he needs help. He just pointed a weapon at me. Please get him therapy because he isn't normal. She calmly tells my brother to go upstairs and completely ignores the fact that I'm shaking and crying. No reaction, no fear, no concern, nothing. Just another day. I grabbed my cat and some things so I can spend the night at a friend's house. On my way out the door my mom said where are you going? I said I'm not staying here. He is going to cut my throat in my sleep. Then she told me that he wasn't actually going to do anything. Again just acting like what he did wasn't completely messed up. She didn't care how upset I was and she didn't care that my brother was making a violent threat towards me. Even my stepdad responded with you guys need to quit bickering like this was just another innocent sibling fight. They didn't give a single care. I should mention that my brother has violent outbursts all the time, he hits our sister, threatens to unalive us all, physically fought our mom, kicked one of our dogs, has hundreds of holes punched into his bedroom walls as well as weapon marks. 
He punched a dent into our mom's car and told his friends he was going to sneak into our parents' room in the middle of the night and cut my mom's throat. I know we want to say that he is just being a boy but this kid is seriously twisted. He always wants to do something violent and always threatens to unalive us with complete seriousness in his voice. I just want a normal family. I am 24 years old. I moved out when I was 18 but my fiancé died in a motorcycle accident last year so I had to move back in with the parents because I couldn't afford a place on my own. My little brother was bad before but I never realized how much worse he got until I started living with him again. How did you get over an abusive relationship? I found a man who treated me right. I realized something about my boyfriend today. I took a college course that delved into the root of color theory and psychology of color theory during my art degree. My boyfriend didn't. We were discussing colors when he asked a question. I wasn't able to remember in completion so I prefaced my answer with that. My boyfriend said well I don't know color theory like you do so I trust what you say. In a happy and kind tone. That made me remember how my ex, he was abusive during the whole relationship, reacted in a similar situation. My ex had gotten a color theory fact wrong. I corrected him kindly and he didn't believe me. I said I took the color theory class, that's what I learned in a nice and lighthearted tone. My ex said seriously? In a pissed off voice and stormed out of the store, causing a scene. I followed him and asked what just happened. He said, you're making me look dumb just because I didn't take your color theory class. I tried to explain that I was just trying to teach him about the colors he was discussing since he didn't know, and I had no bad intentions, something he would do about games or tech to me. He didn't budge and stayed pissed at me. He brought the situation up for days and complained each day about it. That then made me start to think about my birthday. That same ex didn't do anything for my 21st birthday except take me to the nearby saloon for one drink. Then he argued with me later that night and made me cry on my birthday then I slept alone. My current partner, for my 23rd birthday, planned an all-day birthday date with me. Starting with gifts, then my favorite coffee and breakfast, then shopping, then the zoo, and finally our local hockey game where he bought delicious food and drinks from the venues. He cuddled me when we got home and spent the rest of the night watching what I wanted to watch or playing games I wanted to play. Being with my boyfriend is honestly a major eye-opener. I'm so happy to have my current partner. I've never felt more hurt, wanted, and loved. I can't wait for our future. We just celebrated our one-year anniversary two days ago. What's the single best piece of advice you've ever heard? To know who your true friends are, look for the ones who say good things behind your back and bad things to your face. The grass isn't greener on the other side, it's greener where you water it. Don't spend life daydreaming about what could be in a different place or circumstance. Instead, invest your energy in what is right in front of you and see how it can be cultivated into something beautiful. A few months back someone posted how his boss always seemed totally at peace in a high-stress environment. Totally chill, no matter how messed up things got. When he asked him about it, the boss said someday, someone you love will die, and everything else will seem totally irrelevant. Totally morbid way of saying life is too short to be mad slash sad slash stressed all the time, but it gets to the point and it's stuck in my head. Don't worry about controlling your emotions. Control your actions. This was from my geometry instructor when I was a sophomore in high school. He was the kind of guy who spent 80% of class time discussing mathematics, and 20% talking about life. He was an excellent teacher, and one hell of a human being. The goal, I think, of parents in the area where I grew up was a kind of steely-eyed stoicism. Conceal your anger, ignore your lust, show no fear, show no weakness, be strong, strong, strong. Being awash in hormones, I could do none of those things, and I was beating myself up constantly. I think most kids in school were under the same pressure. His advice hit me right between the eyes. The experience of emotions is outside our control, but our response to them is not. Don't be ashamed of a feeling, but be ashamed if you act like an ass because of the feeling. That idea changed everything for me. I passed his insight onto my kids, and I still apply it to my own life decades later. I left my narcissistic date high and dry. Now he's whining about not getting his slong wet. I recently went on a date with a guy I really hit it off via text. Everything went well, we were very attracted to each other and spent a day or two texting before meeting up. After work today we decided to have our first date. When I got there, he was already three drinks deep. I decide to catch a drink or two to catch up, ease my nerves, he also decides to keep drinking and occasionally snatches up my shots, I never finish at once, usually sip, to finish them. In person, conversation is less imaginative. We start talking and he starts the convo by telling me how much he hates short hair on women, mine is shortish, but I pull it off. Then he goes to look for a photo of something. As he is scrolling through his gallery he mentions he has pictures slash videos of, A, his junk B, his having intimacy with other women C, his threesomes with his ex, he asks me if I've ever been in a threesome to preempt the above, D, he reveals his ex, who he insisted was just an ex-girlfriend up till now, was his ex fiance E, his frat escapades and adventures I must have visibly expressed my distaste. He picks it up a bit and apologizes for hurting, my, feelings. I reply I find it tacky, especially considering he asked me out and expressed an intent to date for a serious relationship and, in his words, was past that part of his life. We leave and he doesn't want to part ways, wants to make it up to me, we go to another spot. 
he orders six drink flights and downs four by himself. Obnoxiously intoxicated and all over me. Suggestive, flirty, trying to kiss me. Asks if I want to go to the movies. Fine, I can forgive being intoxicated though I'm slowly over it. In the theater he lies to the ticket attendant, sneaks us in, he's a lawyer mind you, he can afford it, buys me snacks. Passes out 15 minutes into the movie. I'm well over it by this point. He had hinted several times how he wants to leave and have intimacy. I try to. Wake him up. No dice. Every time I try he snores even louder. So I left him there. It was a terrible date and night. He called me when I got home an hour later to apologize but also insist I'm a jerk, called me fat, told me he had to drink to tolerate me etc. and cuss me out. He says I'm insecure. I hope he sees this, you little jerk. Hope you enjoy a sad life, I'm never seeing you again. Not one of them showed up for my birthday party. Not a single soul. I'm absolutely broken. I'm writing this one day after my birthday. This day was supposed to be special. I hoped it would be the first good day after a long while. A few months ago my girlfriend broke up with me. This hit me hard and had a bad influence on my job. Now I don't know if I make it through the test period and I'm so stressed out and my birthday party was one of the few things I looked forward to. My plan was to start my celebration at a local pizzeria and let the guests choose from several options I had planned for the evening. For this reason, I arrived a little earlier because I still had a few things to discuss with the owner of the pizzeria. Everything was decorated and ready. I sat there and waited. When no one was there five minutes after the party started, I called my friends one by one. No one answered the phone. I figured they were just late and I would just have to be patient. I sat there for about an hour, kept calling my friends with no answer and kept an eye on the door but no one came. Eventually the waitress brought my pizza to the table, but I couldn't eat. I started to tear up and kept hoping that at least one of them would come through the door. At some point I couldn't take it anymore, ran to the toilet and started crying. After I had calmed down, I returned to the table and saw the waitress standing at the table. I sat down and just mumbled that I wanted to pay. She asked me if everything was okay. I tried to smile to give the impression that everything was okay, but of course she noticed that I wasn't feeling well. The pizzeria refunded my money. Also for the pizza I had eaten. I ran home and tried to contact my parents in the meantime. My father didn't pick up the phone but at least my mother did. I asked her if she wanted to come and see me and explained what had happened. She said she would like to but didn't have time. I spent yesterday evening just sitting at my computer and at least trying not to burst into tears. But it wasn't that easy because I saw some of my friends online playing a game. It wasn't even that they didn't have time. They just didn't want to spend it with me on my birthday. And they didn't even care enough about me to at least cancel so I wouldn't have to wait for them. My mother offered to talk to me about it again today. She said she would call me. But she didn't. And when I tried to call her, she didn't answer. I guess I'm writing this because I'm desperate and just want someone to listen to me. The only people who were wishing me a happy birthday were my parents and the pizzeria staff. I mean I was used to my brothers not remembering my birthday but not my friends. Who do you fear the most? Groups of young teenagers in the United Kingdom. I know some Americans will probably read this and think I'm a right wimp for being scared of a load of kids, but you don't know man. You weren't there. See, the thing is with these kids, be they scallies, chavs, neds, roadmen, townies or whatever you call them in your region, is that typically they appear in large groups, they have little to lose and so don't care about doing the stupidest crap possible, and they are not afraid to hound you and make your life a misery if you challenge them. Sure, one-on-one, -on -one, I wouldn't be particularly scared about a 14-year-old skull, although they increasingly carry pointy objects and medieval weapons and crap, but the point is that you rarely do encounter them one-on-one. -on -one. And let's say, there's a load of them camped outside your nan's house chucking stones at her windows and you think, F that, I'll go chase them off, what is likely to happen is that they'll start posturing around you and throwing stones at your head or they might F off, but then they'll find out where you live, if you live nearby, and they'll start wrecking your house and you might even find your house firebombed. It might sound extreme, but it does happen. The police are ineffective as they have no respect for the police and, anyway, their minor so cannot properly be held accountable unless they do something really bad. And anyway, being tough on crime only goes so far. A more holistic long-term approach to the issue is required, but sadly no government has the vision or appetite to really commit to such policies. So, essentially, you are powerless to do anything meaningful against them because you will only exacerbate the situation. These kids have the capability to make your life hell. They can make going to the local shops a genuinely nerve-wracking experience, particularly for the elderly and those with disabilities. They can really ruin the atmosphere of otherwise solid, working-class communities. And that's the thing too, it is the working-class communities where they live and hang out that suffer the real brunt of their aimless destructive behavior. You can be somewhat insulated against them if you live away from them or even just on a road they don't frequent, but if you are forced by circumstance to live where they congregate, then your life can be pretty miserable if you get on their bad side. And yeah, I'm scared of them. I'm less scared of some actual high-up gang leader than I am these kids because at least with the real gang members they're not interested in you unless you give them a reason to be, whereas, like I said, these kids have nothing to lose and might target you simply because they can and they think it's funny. It's the one thing I really don't miss about living in more working-class areas, which can otherwise be much more friendly and interesting places to live. I exposed my abusive ex to her new fiancé and now everyone is calling me a creep. I, 26, dated my ex-girlfriend in high school when we were both 16. I had a crush on her since second grade so when she finally agreed to go out with me in high school, I was over the moon. 
Unfortunately, our relationship was a nightmare. I quickly realized she has a low self-esteem, constantly asked for reassurance about her looks and weight, and if I didn't tell her what she wanted to hear, she would gaslight and manipulate me to make me feel guilty. I didn't realize it at the time but after reading stuff online and listening to some Andrew Tate podcasts, I realized her behavior was emotionally abusive. We dated for around one year and she ended up breaking up with because of her mental health. I never saw her after high school because we moved to different cities and her social media accounts were set to private. Recently, there was a high school reunion. I found out she would be there so I decided to go. She hadn't changed much, she was still overweight. She said hi to me as if nothing had happened and proceeded to make small talk with me. It really bothered me that she was pretending nothing happened between us so I asked if we can talk privately. I told her about how I felt about the way she treated me when we were dating. She said something like she was going through a tough time with her self-confidence and apologized for taking it out on me, etc. She said ever since she met her current partner she was feeling more confident about herself. She then told me they were engaged which also came as a shock to me. I asked her if she had told him about us and how she treated me when we were dating. She said she mentioned her past relationships to him but didn't share all of the details. I told her she needs to tell him about how she was abusive to me so that he knows who he is marrying. At this point, she made up some excuse and ran away from the conversation. I thought that her new partner deserved to know what he's getting into. She's still overweight and has not made any effort to change or improve herself and probably has the same insecurities. I knew this man was going to have a terrible marriage. So after the party, I used a friend's account to find her fiancé and I sent him a message detailing the things she did when we were dating in high school. He responded asking me to stop bothering them. It's been about a week since I did this and now I'm getting bombarded with messages from high school friends calling me a creep and a jerk. I don't understand how people can side with her when she was the one being abusive. It is her responsibility to let her fiancé know about it, I did what I thought was the right thing to do. Maybe they're reacting like this because they don't have the full story about our relationship? Am I the jerk for helping this poor man? What is something you're afraid to admit? I miss the beer named 2020 virus. I know it's crazy to say that because so many people died, but there was something special about that time. I can remember the day everything shut down, March 13, 2020. I was in my sophomore year of high school and I was desperate to go home. I didn't know anything about the virus that day, but the nervous chatter of my classmates quickly introduced the virus to me. I didn't think it was that big of a deal until rumors of having an early dismissal that day. That's when they told us, our teachers passed out papers that explained the risk of the virus and said we'd be having a week break. They fully expected us back the week after and wanted us to do our work as usual. When we left that day, I was the happiest I'd ever been. I just started dating a new boy, and we left with the promise that we'd see each other in a week. I was wrong. But I'm happy about it. During the lockdown, while everyone was complaining about having a hard time concentrating at home or lacking social connections, I found myself thriving in a way I never did before. The thing is that I've always had horrible social anxiety when I was in school. I always felt like people were judging me and I stayed away from all people. I was that weird girl in the corner who looked like she didn't know how to dress up or brush her hair. When I was home, I was about to be myself again. I didn't feel like everyone was watching me, most people actually had their cameras off themselves. Before, I wouldn't eat at lunch because I felt like people would think I was fat, but when I was home, I finally ate three meals a day. You'd be surprised how much better you'd feel when you eat regularly. I also made more friends than I ever did before. Now, I didn't have to rely on social cues and find when was the right time to add myself to the conversation. Now, it was time for group chats. The group chat I had during 2020 gave me lifelong friends. They were people I would have never spoken to in high school, and suddenly, I knew everything about them. I would call them every night and although I was physically alone, I felt alive. There's something special about sitting in your comfiest PJs and clicking into a Zoom call. I wouldn't be lying if I said that I didn't miss the feeling of being stuck in your house with nothing to do but connect to the people you love online. What can make a good person turn to the dark side? Fear. It's something everyone experiences in their life, but too much of it can turn someone into something you'd never recognize. We all have been scared of something in life, scared of the dark, scared of the monster under your bed, scared of disappointment. But we have experienced the benefits of someone helping ease our fears in a beneficial way, some don't. Have you ever wondered why H. Tiller turned out the way he did? Or why did the Enzis follow what he said without any protests? Let's take a look at their environment, Germany had just lost the First World War, and their economy had been suffering. They were afraid for their life. They were afraid they wouldn't have their next meal. And H. Tiller, jumping on the hate of Jewish people, had latched their fears onto the backs of Jewish people. And thus began the atrocities. Masses of German people joined the NZ party and began to commit atrocities on the Jewish people, all stemming from their prejudice and fear of losing their lifelines. Now you'd think, I get scared too but I would never hurt someone else in the way that they did. That's easy to say when you're sitting there on your cell phone, rotting in your bedroom. But a famous psychologist had a similar question, would anyone turn to this level of violence? And so he created the famous study called the Milgram Experiment. This study was to test whether someone will follow orders to do terrible things. We all would think that normal people wouldn't hurt anyone, but we thought wrong. In the experiment, Milgram took ordinary people who were interested in learning how memory worked and basically lied to them about what the study would be. The participants believed the experiment would be a regular memory test on people to see how well people could remember things when taught by another. 
but what they didn't know was that they were about to be driven to a place of no return. Milgram brought the participant to a room with a computer and told them that in the other room, another participant would be labeled the learner. The participant was then told that they would ask the participant several questions, and if they got a question wrong, they would be shocked. To show the participants what the shock would be like, they would be shocked at the lowest level. As the learner got more and more questions wrong, they'd be shocked at a higher level. Here's where the deception started. The learner was not a real participant but rather a part of Milgram's experiment and would not be shocked. Instead, it would be an audio of someone pretending to be shocked. The participant wouldn't be shocking the learner, but they didn't know that. When the participants began the experiment, the learners would continuously get questions wrong, and the participants would have to shock them. They did not shock them eagerly. In fact, they would anxiously do it whenever the experimenter encouraged them to do it. They would even say that if they continued shocking, it would be on Milgram's back and not theirs. The learner would let out screams of pain, and eventually, they would fall silent. Only some of the participants went to the most extreme level of shock. The participants were not unaffected by this, though. One of them even had a heart attack from the stress. However, at the end of the day, they continued to shock the learner when the experimenter pressed them to continue. They were too scared to do otherwise. They just followed the instructions blindly. This tells us a lot about our society. Normal people in everyday life can be pushed to do anything as long as some form of authority pushes them. In other words, obedience can push anyone to do anything through a little bit of fear. I ruined my sister-in-law's child bride wedding and now everyone hates me. My and my husband have been married for a while. His sister, 16, let's call her Tina, liked a guy at her school and she always told me about him, but she was too shy to share it with anyone else. For context, my husband's family is extremely religious so they don't allow their children to do any premarital intimacy. My husband and I moved somewhere else in the past year and I stopped seeing his sister. I heard that she was engaged, I was shocked so was my husband, she is too young to be married. After I heard Tina was engaged I spoke to her and that's when I found out, she had slept with the guy that she liked from school, and her father was forcing her to get married to him. She told me that it was just an innocent thing and she didn't want to marry him. The thing that broke my heart she never said no, she agreed to marry a guy that she just had a crush on from school never thought now she would be forced to build a family with him. She tried to explain to her family that it was just a crush and she was curious about intimacy. Weeks before the wedding I had to tell my husband about everything. I told him that he has to go there and take Tina and bring her here, our house. He did exactly what I told him to do, a day before the wedding he went to his family's house and took Tina and brought her to our house and she has been living with us ever since. His family has hated me ever since. They tried to convince Tina once again, that she should have married that man and that I'm a snake for breaking off the wedding. Last night she argued with me and my husband and told us that we ruined her life and she wished she got married that day and listening to me has ruined her chance of being happy. My boyfriend asked me if I would choose him over my sister I said no. Now he's having a temper tantrum and doesn't think we are ready for marriage anymore. I think he's overreacting. My boyfriend and I were watching the show, The Ultimatum and we started asking each other ultimatum questions. He asked me if it was between your sister and me, who would you choose never to see again? Without hesitation, I said I would choose to never see him again. I wasn't expecting his reaction and he looked really hurt but I tried to explain. I said if I had no choice and I had to pick my sister or him to never see again, the reason I would pick him to never see again is because he would have support while my sister wouldn't. Not trying to make this a sob story but my sister and I haven't had an easy life. She and her children are the only biological family I have left who is alive and vice versa. We really depend on each other and this is vastly different from my boyfriend who comes from a massive extended family to the point that he doesn't know how many first cousins he has. Even with my explanation, he seemed really hurt and yesterday told me he doesn't think we should even be considering marriage if I don't choose him first every time like he would me. I don't see what I did was wrong and my answer is still the same. I would choose my sister over him if I had to make a choice. He's now ignoring me and huffing around the house looking like an idiot. He even told some of our mutual friends and now they're barking up my phone telling me that my significant other should always be my priority. I just think that my sister needs to help me, he could always find another me but she can't find another sister. I told my baby mama that I'm slowly dying and she thinks I'm being selfish. I should have known not to have a horrible disease that'll kill me before our kid graduates high school. Me and Kate are the parents of Mark, four. We split up before he was born, and to be honest I'm not very involved with the parenting besides being generous with child support and occasionally having Mark over. I have a chronic and terminal condition that recently landed me in hospital. I had a really horrible flare-up and had to be admitted to ICU. To make it worse, it happened during the time I was supposed to have Mark over. I was unconscious and on life support so I couldn't answer Kate's calls. When I woke up, I checked my phone and saw all the missed calls and messages. Kate was very upset as I basically ghosted her, and she sent a lot of rude and judgmental messages. So I snapped a pic of me in the hospital bed with all the tubes attached and sent it to her with the caption, sorry was busy trying not to die. Kate obviously freaked out and apologized, and I, being high on meds, told her that it's okay just a normal day having X. Turns out Kate didn't know about my condition. We didn't really have a relationship, she was just a girl from my school whom I hooked up with and it didn't end very well. And we don't have much contact aside from Mark-related stuff. I don't know why I didn't tell her, I probably forgot or something. Obviously, it made her freak out even more. Kate called me and started crying and yelling at the same time, 
basically having a breakdown over the phone. She said I should have been upfront with her about it back then, that it's my fault if Mark ever gets sick, it's not a genetic nor a transmittable condition so he's okay by the way. She also said it's unfair that we made a baby who will lose his dad at a young age, and this is where I might have been the jerk. I said, you know what would be more unfair? Effing dying before my only son graduates high school. It upset her even more and she said that I'm the asshole for making her and Mark go through this. I said it was not my fault, she said it was because if I was upfront with her, she wouldn't have hooked up with me. I told her it was too late, and she called me a jerk, hung up, and told everyone I was a jerk to her. I'm divorcing my pregnant wife because she touched my phone. My wife and I have been married for 10 years, and we've been mostly happy. We're even pregnant with twins, a boy and a girl. One thing about our marriage, though, is that we have a strict privacy rule. No one is allowed to look through each other's stuff, trust is the most important thing. My wife started jokingly making snide comments that I was having an affair. I thought she was teasing me, so I mostly ignored her or laughed with her. I didn't know she was actually serious. Then she was getting more irritated and arguments increased. In one argument, I asked her what her problem was, and she told me that I was cheating. She started telling me about how I'm always late from work, or how I was staring at a woman in the park, etc. I tried to explain everything and resolve her doubts. I even offered to go to couples therapy to clear her doubts. Then she started demanding to see my phone. I was like nope, I don't have to do it. I never asked to see her phone, by the way. She told me if I had nothing to hide, I should do it. I told her that she should trust me and I should not have to give proof of my honesty to her. But she would not let it go so I unlocked it and told her that if she looks into my phone, we're done. She checked my phone, and I just went numb. Of course, she didn't find anything, I never cheated, and I don't plan to ever cheat. I told her I would move out now and we could figure out the rest later. She freaked out and tried to apologize, but there was no going back. Now she's blaming it on pregnancy hormones, saying that she has had dreams that I was cheating. I understand that, but she should have trusted me, I don't have to provide proof, it should be obvious otherwise, why marry me? If she was having bad thoughts, we could just talk it out, and go to therapy. She should not have put me in this position. It's very insulting that my own wife needs proof of my loyalty to believe me. The fact that she even believes that I'm the type of person who would cheat on his wife, especially his pregnant one. She called her parents, and they called mine, and now they're all harassing me, trying to make me forgive her. I made up my mind, she crossed the line. It's over. I feel so depressed, I had planned so many things. I spent countless hours babyproofing my house, I just wanted a happy family for myself and it's all gone. Now I have to figure out how to be a single parent. My phone has been buzzing all fucking day. I have stopped replying to texts and receiving calls. I have a right to be trusted in my own marriage without having to give proof every step of the way. My sister wants me to give her one of my newborn twins because I already have kids. She said it isn't fair that I get to have kids and she doesn't. My sister Andrea has found it hard to conceive for so long. Even when she did have a child thrice, she miscarried each time. Her last pregnancy was three years ago. She was in hysterics at that time. I asked her whether there was anything I could do. She admitted that it's unfair I have a child, and she doesn't, talked about how it might be her fault, etc. She was sobbing so hard I thought she might pass out. Nothing I say would ever convince her, and in the end, I said, if you want a child, I'll give you mine if I ever get pregnant again. Now, please stop blaming yourself. I regretted it immediately, but I already said it. So, when she asked me whether I really meant that, I said yes, it's been two years, and I recently gave birth to twins. Throughout the pregnancy, she was very supportive, and nothing seemed off. But it's been a few weeks since they were born, and she approached me to say congratulations and asked me to hand over one of the babies now. I was surprised slash shocked, but she reminded me of my promise and said I can't back away from it now and that I have three kids anyway. I have a girl for my first pregnancy and a boy and a girl from the latest one. I straight up refused and asked her to F off. She began to start crying and yelled that I had promised and that I betrayed her, etc. We got into an argument, and when my husband learned about it, he yelled at her himself and asked her never to show up to his house again, etc. We had a large verbal sparring along with her and her husband. A few of my family are also saying that I should give up the child and that there's nothing wrong with her raising them, etc. I am not backing down, though, but they're saying I did promise. Am I the a-hole? I refused to attend my sister's wedding after she purposely excluded my children. My sister Laura is a bit high-strung. She hates messes, loud noises, anything that could happen after a bit of fun. So naturally, she's also a child hater. She's getting married in this super fancy church and I can already imagine the disinfecting she's going to be doing just to stand there and say I do. As you can already guess, she doesn't want any kids at her wedding. Her invitation was so beautiful but right at the end, there was a big red X over children and said, if you bring any S men demons, you'll be escorted out immediately. I happen to have 11 year old twins and I was really offended by this. I tried to ask my other siblings about it and they were all chill about it, probably because they can't find anyone who would even be willing to have kids with them. I could respect her choice to not have children, even though I think she'll be miserable when she's old and frail, but I draw the line at hurting my kids' feelings. It felt like a personal insult because I'm the only one in our family to have kids. I called her and told her that I would no longer attend her wedding because it was clear that she disliked my children enough to not want them at her wedding. I mean, 
It's her literal niece and nephew and they're grown enough to behave. She did not take it well. She began to yell at me by saying that she wanted everyone to be present there and said things like we have not had any issues before, and it's ridiculous of you to pull something like this, etc. But I did not back down and said that I did not want to argue. I said look, if you want it to be child free, I do not want to attend. Your option is to make do with the others now. She was protesting, but in the end, she got mad enough and is not talking to me now. My parents are calling me names as well by saying that I should have attended it. The wedding's over and I did not go there. But everyone's saying that I should have respected her wishes, which made me think that I did something wrong. Am I the jerk? My dad stole my scholarship money and had the audacity guilt trip when I was angry about it. He threatened to unalive himself as punishment, so I told him to go ahead. For context, I am currently a college freshman. I am on a full ride to my university. Every semester, I get a check sent to my house to pay off my housing costs, which is about $9,000. My unemployed father got evicted from my old address because he wasn't paying rent, so my family started living in a hotel. I was questioning how they were paying for the hotel, considering it was $150 a night. Turns out, my father used my college check to cash out and pay for the hotel for two months. I begged him to pay off my college housing costs for two months straight. He lied to me, telling me that it was attached to some funds, which were hard to get out, very confusing but keep in mind I have absolutely zero financial literacy and my father never went into depth. I brushed it off, hoping that everything would work for the best. My college housing gave my father a deadline to pay off housing costs, November 1st. I was stressed for two months, unable to eat well, sleep, socialize, etc. If my dad doesn't pay it off, I may or may not have to drop out. When the deadline hit, I called my dad and asked him why he hadn't paid off my housing costs. He finally revealed that he used the check on the hotel we were living in. I was furious and I started interrogating him like a prosecutor. He blamed the family for being responsible for using my college money, not himself, and also blamed me. He let me allowance money for two months, telling me that it was for my relatives when it was actually for my $9,000 housing check. I asked him why he would do this and he said that he didn't want to stress me out. I cried telling him I worked way too hard in high school for me to drop out. I said that he owed me an apology three times over the phone, but he refused because he thought he had done nothing wrong since he was providing for the family. I asked him again and he said sorry in a mocking voice. I told him that he was full of crap and he started saying that he wants to put a weapon to his head and unalive himself and it will all be on me. This is not the first time he has done that. I told him to do it and I hung up. My mom called me and I informed her about the situation. She told me to apologize to my dad and I told her as psychotic as I may sound, I have no remorse, especially after what he did. My mom threatened to disown me but I somehow mended things with them for three weeks. It is currently Thanksgiving break and my father still didn't pay off my check and he said that he would get money Saturday to pay it off. My mom told me again to apologize to him after he paid my housing costs, and I said I would avoid conflict. But I think I'm way too stubborn to apologize, especially because I genuinely think I have nothing to be sorry for. My dad never fully apologized and made a joke out of me to the family. My mom ditched me for her new family, so I ran away. I bet she won't even notice I'm gone. My parents were teenage dropouts and had me when they were 17. My dad, being the absolute idiot he is, got arrested for selling grass. When my dad was in prison, my mom decided she had enough of his crap and started sleeping with her boss at Walmart. She ended up getting married to him when I was 10 years old, and my life went downhill from there. When they first got married, they were hyper-focused on me. They would get me anything I wanted and always bring me out on Fridays to Dave and Buster's for milkshakes, I was like their perfect son in their perfect little family. Then, my mom started acting weird around me. She was always throwing up and getting all teary-eyed about literally everything. One day, she sat me down and told me that I was going to have a little sister. I was so excited, but when my little sister came around, it felt like I was second place to her in everything. Since my sister was the baby, they gave her anything she wanted and ignored me at all costs. It got even worse when she had my little brother. I became like a ghost she hardly paid attention to me. She neglected me emotionally, and I felt like I was unwanted in her life. I didn't matter anymore. As I grew up, I continued to try to get her to talk to me, but she was always busy. With my brother and sister, every family activity they did together, she always excluded me. It was always my stepdad and mom and my siblings, except for me. Like I wasn't part of the family, this is how I came to my conclusion that my mom hates me or she dislikes me. As I mentioned before, I have two younger siblings aged four and nine. One day, my mom comes into my room, she's all dressed up and racing around, and I ask if she's going somewhere. She tells me no, and I go back to playing on my computer. No later than 15 minutes, I hear the garage door go up, so I race downstairs, thinking, what the heck? Sure enough, my mom, stepdad, and my sister and brother are all dressed up and in the truck, and I'm standing outside, feeling really uncomfortable. The look she gave me as she jumped into the truck made me feel I was interrupting her. There wasn't any oh yeah, sorry, it was just a look of absolute disgust. I don't cry very easily, but something about the whole thing really got to me, and I went back inside and cried a bit but then got over it. It wasn't the first time. She texted me 10 minutes later, telling me they were just going to the park. I didn't respond because I would have just worked myself up again. Fast forward they get home, I was eating dinner, and my 9-year-old sister rushes in after my mom super excited to tell me about everything they had done. They hadn't gone to the park. My mom had lied to me, saying they went to the park when they'd actually gone to Dave and Buster's, they also went to get milkshakes and went shopping. 
I was visibly crushed by it, and my little sister noticed I had gotten upset. I could tell my mom was about to start making excuses and making the circumstances my fault so to keep my little sister and brother from seeing that, I excused myself to my room quietly. I've been trying so hard to be a good son despite the selfishness of my mother and her chaotically selfish ways toward me, but once I realized that stuff isn't normal, I started questioning our relationship. I knew I had to get out of the house but I had literally no one except for my mom and siblings, and even they don't care about me. There's only one place that'll take a broke 19-year-old with no college credits, the army. It was spur of the moment, but I enlisted right away and boot camp starts in two weeks. I haven't told my mom at all, not that she noticed anything was different anyway. I've started packing my stuff and sending it to my friend's house for safekeeping. At least in the army, I'll have a real family. I keep finding long blonde hair in my bathroom I'm a brunette with a pixie cut. It can't even be my husband's because he's balder than Mr. Clean. This started a few weeks ago. While cleaning the bathroom I found a number of long hair strands over my bathroom wall by the shower. This struck me as very odd because not only does my husband not have hair, but I also wear a very cropped, short hairstyle. So it's impossible for the strands I found to belong to either me or my husband. It's also literally golden blonde. I've had brown hair for years and I've never dyed it to blonde ever. We don't have family members with blonde hair either it's just a brunette cult. I washed them away but couldn't stop thinking about it. I decided not to mention it but kept looking out for them. There seems to be a pattern that there are hairs appearing when I'm either at work or out for a longer time period. I feel like I'm going crazy and feel like I shouldn't just immediately go to my husband cheating on me with a longer-haired woman. I asked my husband about it and he just shrugged. This makes me more paranoid as surely this is something that's strange so why is he so blasé about it? I'm starting to think he's playing it down to stop me from finding out the truth. It happened again two days ago and I asked my husband again. He dismissed it but this time admitted it was strange but told me the only explanation was that they must be my hair. They are not and after saying so, now he'll just ignore me if I bring it up. I don't want to assume my husband is cheating on me and accuse him of such over something so ridiculous, but I'm driving myself into the ground trying to work out how the hairs have got there without my husband dismissing it as nothing. There's just no way it could have been anyone I knew. I think I'm gay for my best friend. I have been friends with Matt since we were 12. We've basically done everything together since. Our siblings and our parents being friends too has made it easy. Our families holiday together, we all go out to dinner at least once a month, and they don't mind us staying over at each other's houses unannounced, even when we are in school. I've never really suspected that he might be interested in men, or that I might be for that matter. We've both had girlfriends in the past and it's just not something that's come up. But a week or two ago my stepdad had made this comment about Matt being gay for me. I didn't think much of it, just thought he was being a dick and complained to a friend about it. This friend has asked why my stepdad thought that and I mentioned that Matt bought me flowers, as a joke, for graduation and he hasn't gotten over it. The friend joked that it was kinda gay and honestly everything's kinda crumbling around me. It's not that I care that he's gay, I just found that I'm aware that that's an actual option. Not just for him, but for me. I didn't really think too much about considering myself until this morning. It's completely taken over my head. How do you even tell the difference between being fond of someone and being romantically interested in them? He had stayed the night last night and this morning I woke up cuddled up to him. He was still asleep. And it was really nice and I found myself smiling about it and then it kinda hit that maybe I'm gay for him. What questions do I even ask myself to work this out? I've thought about what kissing him would be like and honestly, it's not a thought I'm scared of. Not something I'm craving to do but not something I don't want to do if that makes sense. Is that normal? I've never liked his girlfriends and I'm starting to think maybe I was biased and honestly, my last girlfriend broke up with me because I spent too much time with him. I really don't know what I'd do. Without him. I notice all the little things he does for me and make mental notes when I learn little new things about him. I like all the things he likes because I love the way he talks about them. Like I hate football but I like the way he enjoys it. And sometimes I look at him and feel this weird feeling of love and contentment, but not in a butterfly way. That feeling doesn't make me nervous. Not until now at least. He is obviously important to me so I didn't think this meant I might be gay for him. We are going on a trip to Bali on Monday just the two, our first time traveling alone so please please help me out. My boyfriend is being a hater towards my sister's boyfriend. I don't know if he's having a manic episode, but he's obsessed with hating on him. We've been dating for four years now, and before the last few weeks, I felt like he was the best partner I could ever have. I won't go through a whole list of his qualities or what we've been through together, so I'll sum it up by saying we click in a way I've never had with any of my exes. He's always tried to connect with my family, so much so that he's besties with my sister. He always has a high opinion of her and has helped her out whenever she had a weirdo creep on her. My sister Nat is 25 years old, and she's dating one of my old college friends, Peter, who is 29 years old. I used to host a ton of get-togethers and parties in my college days since my parents had a big house, and my cousin would help me set things up. Through those get-togethers, I made a tight group of friends which included Peter, and that's how he met Nat, but back then, it was just polite greetings and small chats between them. Once I graduated, my group drifted off, and I lost contact with people. So I was a bit surprised when Nat, out of the blue, asked me about him and asked if it'd be a good idea if she DM'd and tried her luck with Peter, confessing she always had a crush on him. At this point, Nat was close to being 24 years old, already working on a lucrative job and doing amazing. So obviously, I just wish her good luck and stay out of it.
When my boyfriend found out, he made a quip about Nat being way out of Peter's league but I figured he was maybe being a bit protective since he has become close with my family. It's been five months now and he seems so bothered by Nat and Peter's relationship. Making comments about the difference in their looks, how Peter should be ashamed that Nat outturns him, how there must be something seriously wrong with my sister's head for being head over heels for a loser. At first, I thought something else was bothering him, and he was just taking out those negative feelings by commenting on other people's relationships, but he's made it clear his problem is with Peter. So I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt and guess that he and Peter were just like oil and water, and my boyfriend instinctively hated him and didn't understand why. But in his last outburst he said it wasn't fair somebody like Peter got a great girlfriend without having to do any work. I've asked him several times now if he knows something I don't or if there is more to this than what he says, but he keeps insisting it's just that he can't stand that dating somebody he considers below her league and how it's not right. Then when I tell him he's taking it weirdly personally, he accuses me of having rose-colored glasses for my friend and how I'm not saying how this isn't good for my sister. I'm not kidding when I say there are no red flags besides his weird obsession with my sister's dating life, and before Peter, he didn't even seem to care. So I don't know what has gotten into him. What can I do and where do we go from here? I overheard my mom say my stepdad is bigger than my dad. If he's small then I am too. My mom was on the phone with my aunt and I heard her giggling on the phone. I was not supposed to be home but forgot something and had to go home and to pick something up and as I walked in I heard my dad's name being mentioned and she said something that I can't get out of my head. She was essentially mocking dad's schlong size she said 5 inches and said my stepdad was huge, 7 inches supposedly I can never look at him the same again, I felt nervous and awkward I could not pay attention in school all day after I left the house she did not know I was there. My stepdad came to pick me up at school that day I did not say a word the entire ride home, he wondered if I was okay I did not respond I was afraid to say anything stupid. I feel terrible right now I even went into the bathroom and measured I have 5.6 inch and it's not very thick either and I am effing terrified I was crying in the bathroom. It messed with me and I guess I am a loser as well. My mom asked me if I was okay I just said I'm going to my room and have been there ever since I got home from school, my stepdad knocked on my door and asked if I wanted dinner I said no. I heard him talking to mom and heard my stepdad said I seemed angry about something. My mom knocked on my door and wanted to know what had happened, I tried to avoid the topic and made excuses but she kept pushing and I just yelled at her in her face what I had heard. Her eyes went wide and I ran out of the house told my stepdad to F off and headed outside, my dad is on a trip right now so I can't go to his place. Mom has called me 19 times in little over an hour I refused to pick up and she is texting me asking me to come home and let her explain. I actually spent the night in a hostel and went to my dad's place since was due to come home early in the morning, I refused to go back to mom and my stepdad's place. I can't tell him what mom said I just said I no longer wanted to live with him. My dad has no idea what is going on I have no idea how to tell him I don't want to hurt him because those comments really hurt me and I feel like I have a mom who feels guys like me are losers for the way we are born. I am so angry with him mom has been calling me I just sent her a message saying I am at dad's and told her to stop texting and calling me she has been texting me throughout the night and threatened to call the cops I told her I was staying at a hostel in town, I know someone working there which is how I got a bed. My dad has been on the phone with mom and wanted to know what happened she was reluctant to share anything so she knew I had not told him since he asked, but she just said I overheard something I shouldn't have. My dad has been trying to get me to talk about what I heard, how the hell am I supposed to say anything to him I am terrified I don't want to hurt him either. I still have not found the courage to tell him I am afraid he will be hurt by this as well. My crush humiliated me in front of a whole party. I left and now everyone is telling me I'm a jerk. On Thursday, a person I had a major crush on in high school, but who rejected me, messaged me out of the blue. She had never contacted me without my contacting her first, and at one point I realized she had had me blocked on social media, and so I found it odd that she was suddenly being friendly. After sending a couple of greetings slash questions about how I've been, she said that she was going to have some people over and wanted to know if I would get the beer. The drinking age where we are is 19, and she and the people who were going to chill were all 18. The liquid substance stores in my area all card. I thought it was silly that my being a month older meant I could buy substances and they couldn't, and so I said I would love to go. She said, thanks, I'll pick you up at 7. 7 o'clock rolled around, and she texted me to say she was in front of my house. I went out dressed and ready to chill with some people, and she drove me to the liquor store. When we got there, I asked what beer she wanted me to get, and she told me to get Budweiser. I hid my disappointment as well as I could, but it was her party so I went in and bought two cases of 24. I got back in the car and said let's party, and she was eerily quiet. I noticed that she wasn't driving towards her neighborhood, but rather back towards mine. I thought she had moved or something, but didn't want to press the issue. When she turned down my street I finally figured it out. She was being purposefully vague about the invitation because she wanted me to get the beer, but she wanted a way out when she told me I wasn't actually invited in the first place. She stopped in front of my house, leaned over, kissed me on the cheek, and said, thanks. In her best voice. I deadpanned her and asked when she was going to tell me I wasn't invited. She feigned surprise and said that she never intended to invite me in the first place. I sat in silence for a long awkward minute, picked up the beer, and walked towards my front door. She got out of her car and frantically tried to re-invite me to the party, but I told her that what she did was the most humiliating thing that ever happened to me. I opened my front door, slammed it a bit too hard, and came back to my room. Now I'm sitting here drinking absolutely unpalatable piss water, and I have text messages from all of her friends and her asking me why I'm being such a jerk. I don't think I'm the jerk for reacting the way I did, but if you haven't figured it out I'm not amazing socially so I'm not sure. Am I? 
My kids constantly choose my husband's girlfriend over me. I don't know how to get them to love me again. My husband and I were together for eight years before having our first son, and things changed drastically after we became parents. My desire level died because of exhaustion, being a new mother, etc. When I had our kids, he was barely present. He'd constantly whine whenever I asked him to change our children's diapers. One time he even started throwing stuff at me when I asked him to take care of our child for a day. I dried up like a Sahara dessert that day. I never got the same level of desire back, and after the second son we had to have a conversation because it was becoming a major issue. I really didn't care about intimacy anymore, although I was willing to go along with it, there were some lines I drew that I hadn't before. He came out as a furry a year into our relationship and I went along with it, but after children I decided that it made us incompatible and I didn't want to partake in it anymore, and I suggested if he wanted more intimacy in someone who was willing to pretend to be various animal characters, he get a girlfriend. He found one after about a year online, and although I did initially suggest it, I wasn't happy. I didn't believe that he could find someone because he is ADHD and might be slightly autistic. She is very eccentric and according to her parents, she is diagnosed autistic, but she is a very sweet woman and gets along with everyone. After a while I agreed that she could move in with us and things were going well, but over the last two years there have been a lot of issues that I don't like, my husband spends more time with her than with me, and they send each other cutesy texts, which he never does with me, her parents are well off and buy my kids expensive gifts that make my parents, and to a lesser extent his parents, their real grandparents, look bad. The kids seem to like her more than me sometimes, for example she spends a lot of time teaching them how to draw, which especially our oldest son loves, and she wears animal accessories in public. Last week we had a snapping point where we went out for lunch after picking up the kids for school, and I suggested we go to get haircuts for the kids and then go to the speciality cheese shop that is in the mall where the hairdressers are. My husband wanted to go to the comic book store instead, and his girlfriend agreed as she wanted to get a bobblehead. I asked the kids directly if they would rather go with me or his girlfriend, and they both chose the girlfriend. I was shocked because my husband usually spent most of his time effing his girlfriend in his costume, I thought my kids would have automatically chose the person who actually took care of them. I refused to let my niece live with my substance-obsessed sister. Am I the jerk for wanting to sue for custody? My sister Lily had my niece Emma when she was 26. She was at the time living with my parents along with her then-boyfriend and they had both just gotten out of rehab for age addiction. Both her and her boyfriend were not able to stay clean for long, and she was using them throughout her pregnancy. When Emma was almost two months old, she came to me begging me to take Emma for two months while she checked into rehab again to get clean. I was 22 years old living in an efficient apartment while putting myself through law school, but my parents insisted they couldn't care for an infant and had suggested foster care to my sister, so I took my niece in. When my sister got out of her rehab, she got back together with her boyfriend who was still taking drugs and thus began five years of a vicious cycle where one of them would get clean only to be dragged back under by the other. I took legal guardianship of Emma, although it was still supposed to be temporary. Every time Lily would bring up taking her back, I said I would agree on the condition that they both passed a substance test. That never happened. When Emma was almost six years old, my sister came to me saying she was once again pregnant. This was the turning point for her, and she gave birth to my nephew having been clean for almost eight months. Obviously it was very hard for both me and Emma, going from her living with me, to moving back in with her parents. We went to court and worked out a custody arrangement where I still have Emma every weekend, but she spends the week with her mom and dad. We attended family therapy all together for the first year, and once we settled on a routine we stopped. Here comes the issue, my sister is once again pregnant and she and her former boyfriend, now husband, say that they don't want to allow Emma to come with me on weekends because apparently she comes home to them acting like a brat. I absolutely understand the issue. My sister is a stay-at-home mom, she does not work so she has plenty of time with Emma, but she chooses not to. I explained to my sister that when Emma is with me she is the center of attention and going from that to having to fight her brother for her mom's limited attention between bouts of morning sickness has to be hard. I offered to take my nephew weekends as well to give my sister some rest, or to possibly resume family therapy so Emma could work through these changes. My sister simply told me that Emma would be taking a break from spending time with me. I let her have two weekends with Emma and then when she continued to stonewall me I threatened to take her to court. We have a custody agreement in place and I am still one of Emma's legal guardians. She said I'm throwing the past in her face, and won't let her be a real mother to Emma. I'm conflicted, I raised Emma for almost six years and I treasure every moment I spend with her, but am I getting in the way? Emma calls me every evening and asks what we are doing over the weekend and why I don't have time for her, so I think additionally my sister is spinning it as me not wanting her to come. I just want what's best for Emma, so am I the jerk? Am I the jerk for telling my mom I don't give a damn about my autistic brother? My parents were very loving when I was kid but when I was 7 years old, my mom gave birth to my younger brother. I tried to love him but I noticed that as soon as he came, my parents stopped paying that much attention to me. It got even worse when he was diagnosed with autism when he was 3 years old. Now, my dad is never home and my mom talks to me about once a day because she's so busy dealing with my brother's meltdowns. I've known my best friend Rachel since we were in kindergarten. Her mom is the nicest person I've ever met. 
Rachel and I played soccer but my mom was rarely able to take me to practices and games so Rachel's mom would always take me. I used to be in the school choir and my parents went to like one performance during the six years I did it. Rachel's mom was at every performance for me even though Rachel wasn't in choir. Those are just a few examples, but Rachel's mom has always been there for me when my parents weren't available. My mom never really cares what I'm doing unless she needs me to watch my brother so I spend a lot of time at Rachel's house. Once I spent a whole weekend there and my mom didn't even call to ask where I am. Rachel's family go on a lot of vacations and they often take me. They're going to Disney World during Thanksgiving break and invited me to come with them. I asked my dad and he said I could go. They've already planned and booked everything and I'm really excited. I've been to Disneyland once with my family and it was horrible. My brother threw a huge tantrum on the first day because he wanted to go on the rides alone and sit between mom and dad so I had to stay in the hotel most of the time. My brother found out that I'm going to Disney and he had a really big meltdown. He loves Disney and he was mad that I was going without him. My mom told me that she was planning to go to Washington to visit my grandparents. My dad didn't say anything about that so I'm pretty sure she just made that up to stop me from going. And even if they are going, I don't want to. I don't want to go on a 14-hour car ride with my brother and I'm pretty sure when we get there they're either going to make me stay with him while they go out or take him out and leave me alone in the hotel, I also wouldn't be allowed to go out on my own. She told me that I need to think about my brother and his feelings are more important because he's younger and autistic. I told her that I honestly don't give a f about my brother's feelings and I wish he was never born. He was there when I said all this and he's been crying and screaming for the last three hours and it's giving me a headache. My mom has been trying to calm him down and my dad said that he'll still let me go because he understands I'm frustrated, he also grew up with neurodivergent siblings so he knows what it's like. My mom said that I'm a rude, ungrateful brat and I need to be kinder to my brother. Am I the jerk? My wife cheated on me with my best friend but their stories are different. I don't know who to believe. My wife Lisa and my best friend Tom used to hang out in a group for years. We were kind of known to be the three musketeers of sorts. Even when Tom eventually found someone of his own to marry, Lisa was best friends with her as well. Lisa and Tom had an extremely close relationship, though, and would often call each other platonic soulmates. One day, Lisa came up to me and told me she didn't feel comfortable being alone with Tom anymore. I asked her why and she didn't tell me at first. For weeks, whenever we had a social gathering with Tom, they'd stare at each other for a while, but would never talk. I thought they just had an argument until one day, Lisa came to sobbing. I listened to her side of the story and then asked Tom his side. There's an issue though, they both have different sides of the story. Lisa says that last weekend, she and Tom were alone listening to music together after his wife went to bed. Lisa said Tom was standing next to her and unexpectedly kissed her on the lips. Lisa said she recoiled and said no she was with me and he was married to her best friend. Lisa says Tom then took out his schlong and said that they were both free spirits and it was not cheating unless he put it in her kitty. Lisa says she told Tom she was in love with me, laughed it off, he put it away and ended the night with Tom driving her home a while later. Lisa says this was not consensual and she and Tom decided that it would not be a good idea to be alone together in the future. Lisa revealed this to me after Tom was upset with Lisa after not hanging out again a few nights later. Lisa said she was afraid of what Tom might say to me, and me leaving her as a result, and afraid of losing her friendship with Tom's wife. I asked Tom what happened. Tom says they were SI dancing together. They were close and he kissed her open mouth and felt her breasts. Tom. Said this went on for a few minutes and nothing more happened. Tom said they stopped because Lisa said it was cheating on both me and his wife. Tom said since he was a free spirit and did not consider what was happening cheating, he wanted to jokingly prove a point that he could even take his schlong out and it still wasn't cheating unless he put it in her kitty. Tom said that the dancing, kissing, honker grabbing was consensual, and they mutually decided to not be alone together again. Tom is afraid of his wife finding out. Tom said he did not tell me because he did not consider anything that happened cheating, but admitted his wife would consider it cheating and would divorce him. Both Lisa and Tom have incentive to minimize or not fully disclose what actually happened for fear of my reaction and said they were fearful of me telling Tom's wife. Lisa is adamant in her version. Tom is adamant in his version. Both do not want me saying anything to Tom's wife. Did something more happen? Who is telling the truth? I told my kids I don't love them and I don't care if their mom dies. They're on their own. I, 56, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer back when I was 37. They caught it relatively early but I was not expected to survive. About a month after my diagnosis, my ex-wife Sarah divorced me, took the kids, house and most of our savings. She even turned the kids against me and I was alone, I was an only child and my parents died, to deal with my seemingly inevitable death. Well except one person, my co-worker Jane. She was the only person in the world who seemed to care about me. Before you ask, there was no infidelity, Sarah divorced me because she couldn't be my nurse as she watched me die. Anyways, the doctors wanted to try to remove the tumor after a few courses of chemo, and I went into remission after the surgery and some more chemo. I tried to be there for my kids, but Sarah remarried and my spot was taken by her new husband. After a while I stopped calling them on birthdays and holidays, stopped giving gifts, stopped trying to be involved in their lives. It hurt almost as much as the cancer when I realized I didn't mean anything to them. I ended up marrying Jane and now we have two kids. It still hurts but I love my new family and they actually give a damn about me. Recently, Sarah got diagnosed with terminal heart disease and they are struggling financially. My kids called me for the first time in over a decade to ask me out for lunch. I didn't want to og but Jane said they're extending an olive branch and to at least hear what they want to say. At lunch they didn't even bother with pleasantries, they jumped straight into asking me to help out their mom with medical bills. 
I said no and got up to leave, but my son said that even if I didn't love their mom, they did and if I loved them, I needed to help. I asked them what their half-siblings' names were, when was the last time they called, who they spent the last two decades worth of father's days with. Why the hell? Should I give a crap about a woman who took everything from me and left me alone while facing my death? Why should I give a crap about the kids who wouldn't even see me before my surgery or at any point when I was dying? They were silent. So I said, I don't care about your mom, nor do I give a single damn if she dies. And I don't care how bad her dying hurts you guys because I care about you guys about the same amount you guys care about me. Not the slightest. I won't help because I don't love her or you guys. I then paid for their food and left them at the restaurant. I have been getting calls from my ex's family telling me how awful I am for saying that to my own flesh and blood. Usually, I wouldn't care but my wife told me that even though I'm right, I was too harsh on them. Was I in the wrong? My boyfriend hates it when I wear my crap-stained underwear. So I kicked him out and broke up with him. It's not like they're dirty, I wash them, they just have brown lines on them. I, 21, had an irregular period for a few months after starting a new birth control. Unfortunately, my period stained about one-third of my undies in the crotch area. It's faint, but it's still fairly noticeable. It's a light rusty brown shade. Now that my period is more regular the stained pairs have become my period week underwear. Most girls know what I'm talking about, if they're clean but stained, they don't need to be thrown away. The guy I'm seeing says he doesn't mind period intimacy, but when we were doing the dirty he got really grossed out when he saw my underwear. I was confused and explained it was an old period red liquid stain. He told me how unsexy it was to see what looked like a crap stain in my underwear, what the f. He asked if next time I could change into a clean pair. Not gonna lie this pissed me off. I told him to grow up, and sarcastically apologized that my normal bodily functions is unsexy to him. Plus I pointed out he saw me pick out that pair of clean underwear from my freshly washed laundry an hour ago after my shower. We kept going in circles so I finally kicked him out of my place and texted him I'm not interested in seeing him anymore. He told me that I'm doing him a favor because he doesn't want my blood on his PP. I blocked his number. I'm too old to deal with someone who thinks blood stains are icky. All of my girlfriends agree that he's immature since most women have a designated set of period stained underwear for Shark Week. However, a few of my guy friends said his reaction was understandable since he didn't understand what it was, and I was too harsh. I could have educated him instead of going 0 to 100. Am I in the wrong?